football is back. And we have West Georgia football right here on Flow Sports, UWG Productions, and KISS 102.7. It's the West Georgia Wolves taking on the Limestone Saints on August 31st, the fifth time ever playing here in the month of August. Alongside the great coach, Nick White, I'm Matt Skinner. It's so good to be with you all in another year on UWG Productions. We have such a great crew, and I can't wait to talk about them. But first, let's talk football, Coach. Last year, West Georgia, a great season, 8-2, and two, not quite good enough to get into the playoffs. The team they're playing tonight, the Limestone Saints, went 8-3 and three and got into the playoffs. A little bit of a chip on the shoulder of the Wolves tonight, rightfully so, and we're going to see this high-powered Wolves offense hopefully in full shape tonight. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most celebrated days in the United States of America is when football comes back. It's back. It's here tonight. We're on campus here at the University of West Georgia, and again, like you mentioned, the chip on the shoulder, yeah. missing the playoffs. I think this, uh, this West Georgia Wolves team is hungry to get off on the right track tonight. And, and the player right away to watch for West Georgia, losing Harrison Frost a year ago, uh, or losing Harrison some frost this season after two great seasons passing is our starting quarterback Ben Whitlock. He's the guy that's got to make this team go. Yeah, well, fortunately for us, he was in this system for an entire year last year. Got to watch a really good football player play in front of him. Did not get a lot of passing attempts last year. However, this offense, RPO oriented, great offense to get going early. I look for some early quick completions to kind of get him in a rhythm and some great play calling on West Georgia's side. Ought to turn him loose tonight. I look for him to have a strong opening performance. Now on the Saints side, it's always helpful when you make the playoffs and you return your best player in Dustin Noller. A guy a year ago was very successful to help lead the Saints team uh, to the playoffs. Yeah, unfortunately for us, he's here tonight, 2,500 yards passing, but uh, 21 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. That's really a two to one touchdown to interception ratio. So hopefully he has not fixed that. That would be good for us tonight. Hopefully he will continue to take some risk, get himself into some trouble, and our defense capitalize on that tonight. But he's definitely the guy to watch for uh, Limestone. A lot of players return for this West Georgia team. A lot of familiar faces we'll be talking about. But some new guys that are really going to shine. And we can't wait to show you all those great players. We'll talk starting lineups and a whole lot more when we come back right here on UWG Productions with kickoff next right here at University Stadium. for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest. That will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me. Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Back at University Stadium, Raylin Field, let's get it going. It's Youth and Community Day, Coach. Look at all the great kids in the community here tonight watching some great football action. Honestly, that's what it's about. It's about youth and community, getting young people in good cultured environments, and there's not a better one to be at on Thursday night than right here at University Stadium. Those kids are having a blast. They are making memories that they will not forget. I can promise you that. We're live on Flow Sports, UWG Productions, KISS 102.7. Going to be a great night for some college football. Limestone, the Saints won the toss 
They deferred. We want the football coach, and Ben Whitlock will get the lead out these West Georgia Wolves. We'll take a look at the projected started lineups real quick for West Georgia on offense. The uh, senior transfer from Georgia Southern, Wesley Kennedy, going to get the start at running back. Trey Williams, the fullback, the uh, 6'4", 217-pound sophomore. Zay Britt, our good friend from Oxford, gets the start at the X. And how about this, Coach, from left to right on the offensive line, Brevin Jones, 6'5", 295-pound sophomore. Uh, let's see, at left guard, Marvin James, number uh, 78, number 64, David Bodden, our all-conference center, getting the start tonight at right guard, Austin Donaldson. He's played a lot of football games. And then at right tackle, right tackle Brandon Pippen. Uh, the tight end, Zach Obi for us. And then Javen West, LP's back. LaPerion Perry for his sixth year of eligibility. And uh, Terrell Cole, coach, we just call him T. Cole, number T. two Cole, for the Wolves. Well, the, the main thing that's super impressive about the start lineup, a lot of juniors, a lot of seniors, a lot of leadership on that West Georgia Wolves offense. Interested to see. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised that Limestone chose to defer they gave up a lot of points last year throughout their season, so they must be trying to send a message early. I like our chances of scoring early. West Georgia coming out in the blue top, or the red helmets, the uh, blue tops, blue bottoms, limestone and all white, kind of a navy and blue and yellow look. You look like, if you know the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, that's what they look like. Fair comparison, <laughs> nailed it. Kicking off will be Kay Jones. End over end kick will send LP back and it will land in the end zone about three yards back for a touchback. LaPerion Perry is just, just needs 500 kickoff return yards to break the all time school record this year. And let's take a look at Ben Whitlock and our West Georgia Wolves. Yeah, I like, uh, I know I'm going back to the opening kickoff. I really like the blocking scheme there. If we get an opportunity to return one, I think those 500 yards are going to get gobbled up pretty quick. So Wesley Kennedy getting the start at running back, and we will go with uh, our just uh, straight up four wide outs look. So no tight end, no fullback in the game for West Georgia. Whitlock with Kennedy, two to each side. They show a kind of a four-three look, coach, defensively. Yeah, I'd call that yeah. that new age four-two-five. Yeah. Whitlock gets it out to Kennedy in the flat, 25, 30, up to the 35, around to the 39-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 40. Not a bad start, 15 yards and a first down. And a new rule, Coach, the clock will run after first downs. That's something definitely to keep an eye on, but I'm going to tell you, great downfield blocking by number five, LaPerry on Perry. That's what sprung the swing pass right there. They might be in that new age 4-2-5, but number 10 does not look like a uh, – <laughs> A safety or a – he looks like an outside linebacker. Yeah, he's playing that star <laughs> stud position for sure. Tight left. We give to Kennedy left side. He makes a man miss at the line of scrimmage and then comes up and gets tackled by uh, Ty Cade, the freshman linebacker, who getting the start tonight uh, for the Saints. Pick up of about three and up to the 43, second and seven. Yeah, got to keep them honest. I love having an early rundown call. Now you've got everything open right here on second, six and a half, second and seven. 14 minutes to go. We played a minute almost of college football to start the 2023 campaign. We go three receivers, trips to the right, one to the left, and here comes Kennedy in motion. That's our running back. They'll hand to Kennedy. He'll get the jet sweep, running over a wimpy tackler to, to midfield, and that's going to be a first down for West Georgia. Wesley Kennedy's, uh, we've run three plays. He's got the ball every single time. Great formation, motioning to that trip side. Great play call right there. But I'm telling you, early on, I am impressed at the downfield blocking of our Wolves wide receivers, Matt. They're doing a tremendous job staying on blocks downfield. Big time right there by Brandon Pippen getting one of his first career starts tonight. And if he stays healthy, he's going to make a lot of starts this year. Two receivers each side. That's actually Trey Williams at fullback. Whitlock going to throw. Nowhere to go with it and smartly just throws it out of bounds and gets ready for the next down. Yeah, very good play by the quarterback right there, but great offensive line protection early. Great slide protection right there. Hat on a hat. Uh, no pressure, just nobody open. Second to 10, ball at midfield. 13-12 to go in a 0-0 ball game. We go Trey Williams to the right. H-back right, or our full, but we call him a fullback. T. Cole in single coverage, no safety. Everybody within nine yards of the line of scrimmage. Make it eight yards, coach. Maybe a deep shot here. Here they come. Whitlock going to throw. Quick release, and he had to get rid of it quickly. He had LP on a slant, couldn't get it to him, and Whitlock throws behind. Incomplete. It will be third and ten. 
I'm a little surprised it took Limestone that long to bring pressure on a new quarterback, but they absolutely did. It was a sellout, cover zero behind the play. It was man coverage. They brought the house. He went to the right spot with the ball, just could not get it there in time. Third and 10. Ball at midfield. Got to get to the 40. Maybe four down territory, we'll see. Two receivers each side. Whitlock with Kennedy beside him. Play clock at two, play clock at one. Snap, controlled by Whitlock. Steps up in the pocket, and Zay Britt caught the foot. No, he in and out. Oh, man. In and out, we ran a perfect deep slant. Zay Britt just couldn't hold on to the football and give credit there to number 16. That was Jeremiah Lomax, the six-foot sophomore, just knocked it out of Zay Britt's hands, and it'll be fourth down and time to punt for the Wolves. Yeah, got to come up with that one. Uh, good uh, coverage read right there again by Whitlock. Put the ball on the white right receiver a little bit behind him, but you got to come down and make that play. Would have been a first down. Fourth and ten. The Wolves get to midfield, but it'll be time to punt for Riley Mason. Good snap by new long snapper Reed Reagan, and Mason booms one end over end. Going to bounce at the 12 and go inside the five, and for whatever reason – and the guy decided to pick it up. I thought you were always taught if it's inside the five or inside the ten, you let it go. But nonetheless, he picked it up. That was number three, the running back uh, or wide receiver, Doug Washington. Yeah, also looked like Carson Yancey down there on the special yeah. teams coverage right there. Great way to start uh, on the defensive side of the ball for West Georgia. Great snap, great punt, great coverage downfield. Cannot ask for anything better. Here comes our player to watch for Limestone and the offense for the Saints, Dustin Noller. At quarterback. Got to get my binoculars ready. As a high snap, and they'll hand it off right side. And Xavier Robinson, the team's leading tackler at linebacker, stuffs him right at the line of scrimmage. Handoff uh, goes to uh, Trey Stewart, and nowhere to go for Stewart as he's lo almost lost a yard, Coach. Yeah, did a great job up front right there. Nose guard 97, Eric Williams. They tried to trap him out of there. Did a great job, made the running back bounce it out. Everybody's where they're supposed to be. Eric Williams played a total of like 15 snaps last year and broke his foot and was out for the season. We're excited about what he can do. They'll throw the screen game out here, and we'll uh, – catch him at about the 14-yard line. They throw it out here to Jelani Baker, former West Georgia Wolf. He gets tackled at the 14 by a host of Wolves and about a gain of seven. It's third down. They're hurrying up. A lot of tempo on offense. They try to go quick to Trey Stewart, run it up the middle, and I believe he got the first down. He did indeed before uh, Keandre Williams brings yeah. him down for a first down at the 19. Good quick tempo on their part. Caught us a little bit right there with the same personnel on a third and short, and they were able to pick it up. Got a pretty big offensive line too, Coach. They do, and they're nasty. 52 down there for those guys is doing a really good job early, uh, playing very physical. Luke Ford. He's their left tackle, and he's 296, and he weighs the least amount of everybody. We bring a blitz. They'll throw across the middle, complete uh, tackle made in the open field very nicely by Michael Merriweather, but a gain of about nine. Up to, I believe that was number 11, Coach, uh, Herman McRae, and they're going fast. Yep, they're, they're using tempo, and that is having that quarterback uh, experience, finding the hole after the blitz. Miscommunication as they don't they didn't know if they wanted to hand it off, then the ball got tipped. They tried to throw the quick pass, but the receiver wasn't looking, and Noller goes down. I guess you'll count that as a rush. Great job to get up field by Mason Huntley there, Coach. Well, if you ask me, I'm giving it a sack every <laughs> single time, that quarterback's tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Either way, good negative play, slows them down a little bit. They're rotating guys, which means we get the opportunity to rotate guys as well. Big early third down in the game. We bring our pass rushers on, Festus Davies and Brian Rice coming in on the edges for us. And Coach Masters, our defensive coordinator, is going to have to call a timeout. I believe we only, Coach, we only had 10 on the field. Yeah, you know, it's, I think, you know, part of that is tempo. Uh, yeah. Limestone's done a tremendous job early on using tempo effectively. We have got to kind of get our feet under us. It's week one for us as well. Uh, you know, early third down, I'm not opposed to taking a timeout. Defensively, it's okay to take timeouts, but you obviously, we got to have this payoff. We got to get them off the field here. Well, big third down play when we come back here from our media timeout. 10.31 to go here in the first quarter. Big third down when we, were, when we come back on UWG Productions. Okay, we're 
we're here at Battle of the Halls. Who are we here with? Nicole. Hi, Nicole. And what year are you and what house or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're at AB School <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you got to make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. Yeah, it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah, so. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. UWG Productions, Flow Sports, Kiss 102.7. Look at our student dancers getting the crowd ready to rock and roll for college football, Coach. Man, they're getting after I don't know if you know this or not. I am a two-time dance competition champion when it comes to situations like this. <laughs> I think it's very important to get the, uh, get the folks involved and in getting after it. Oh. Bring that energy. Speaking of energy, big third down coming up right here, Matt. Yes, big third down. Big third down. It, Unfortunately, had to call a timeout. Only had 10 guys on the field, but right now we've got 11. And we've got three down line, and it's third and four. Third and a sh actually a long three almost. Ball is basically touching the 26-yard line. Two receivers each side. They're going to hand to Trey Stewart, and he creases it, gets up the middle to the 35, and Deontay Overstreet finally makes the tackle to the 40. They just did a great job of creasing that one right there. Trey Stewart picks up the first down. Yeah, their offensive line did a tremendous job. They pulled the left guard, got him, got some plus linemen on that side, as you can see on the replay right here. Uh, that left guard pulls, kicks out, blocks the Mike Backer, and they're off. 10 minutes, 10.06 to go. Pistol look, two to the right, one to the left. They're rushing, Noller looking, and he'll finally dump it off to Stewart behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll make the catch at around the 39 and get up past the 45-yard line. Lost our lost the running back out of the backfield, but, hey, give, give Noller some credit right there for keeping his head downfield. Took the words right yeah. out of my mouth. It's tough. You do everything right. You get good pressure. Quarterback's able to do some things with his feet and, and get plus yards on a play that we were looking to produce negative yards on. Second down, five to go. 9.32 and counting. A receiver to each side, tight right. They'll hand to a new back in there. He gets about two yards or so. That's Kalen Clark, uh, the graduate transfer. And he gets about three yards, Coach, across the 45 up to the 47-yard line, third and two, maybe four down territory. Yeah, good play by Abu Bangura, who I believe is one of our pass rushers that was in on that down, doing a good job staying home. I see we got big Jalen Miller in there right in the middle, too. Three down linemen for West Georgia. Keandre Williams waits on the middle. We bring a Mike Blitz. They hand up the middle. We can't make the tackle. Xavier Robinson was there. Then Deontay Overstreet greets uh, the running back, Kalen Clark, but it's good enough for a first down. We had the perfect Mike Blitz yes. call, just couldn't make the, yeah, make the, the tackle. The last uh, Two out of the last three plays have been as frustrating as they could be as a defensive guy in the right spot, just unable to come up with a play, and you got to tip the cap to, to Limestone. There's players are, are making a couple of plays early here. And the good news here, Matt, though, is even though they're kind of marching the ball, they're only at midfield due to a great punt and, and punt coverage. So they still got a long way to go. Three receivers left, one to the right. They'll fake it, looking to pass as Noller across the middle. Big wide receiver makes the grab at the 45, across the 41 to the 40. And a first down Saints, Drew Dixon, the big 6'4", 200-pound senior wide receiver, makes the grab. Yeah, and they're going to hurry up again, but early Noller is looking sharp. He's looking crisp. He knows where to go with the ball. He's going to be tough to deal with. Trips right in a bunch formation. They'll throw a quick screen out to him. Uh, he's out to the 40. He just gets tackled. They're going to call a face mask on us, yeah. even though it should have been a holding. Jet Lee got tackled. 
tackled yeah, right yep. there. But Jet Lee also grabbed the face mask of the running back uh, or the wide receiver, Doug Washington. Yep, should be offsetting penalties right there. And I do see two yellow hankies on the field. Hopefully we'll get some offset. They're still discussing what they're Yeah, I think going we're going to get do. one of each right here. Let's find out. I hope you're right. Let David White tell us. I'll be honest with you, you don't say this often. Well done by the white hat, Mr. David White. That's the correct call. They did everything properly right there. We're going to reset everything. First down, bad guys. Two to the right, two to the left. Trey Stewart stands beside Noller. Now they got the tight left. That's a big, they got some big old dudes, yeah, coach. Yeah, this guy, 81. Yeah. Ooh. High snap, bobbled, they hand to Trey Stewart. He still found a way to get a yard. Man, oh, Xavier Robinson came out of there with the football. I think they're going to call him down. And we do have instant replay this year, Coach. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We'll see what happens here. But you alluded to it right before the snap. Across the front, Limestone, 300, 315, 318. The tight end is 250 and 230. Uh, they're big boys across the front right there. Second and nine. High snap again. That's like the third or fourth high snap. And coming in, can't make the stop immediately. That was Amos Don, who wore 41 a year ago, and now he's wearing number six. He will technically get credit, but they still fell forward for about two yards. Yep, got to keep your eyes up, and you got to wrap something up right there, big man. But here we go, third down. Third down, 6.30 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Trips to the right. Big wide receiver over here to the left is Drew Dixon. They go trips to that right side. This is Kalen Clark standing beside Noller. He goes out of the backfield looking for one-on-one -on -one coverage. Noller going to go get sacked. Keandre Williams where everything is better in better. That is it right there. Great pressure by West Georgia. Had him in a big third down situation. The defensive edges got off clean right there. Produced immediate pressure. Made Noller come off of his first read and didn't have enough time to do anything else. Well done, boys. Well done. Brian Frey will punt it away now, and here you see on the UWG Productions Instant Replay, Keandre Williams, one of the leading sack guys for West Georgia a year ago. He starts it out right here this week. I believe that's Zay Britt back to return it. Snap, controlled, Frey, wobbly punt. It's going to go inside the 10 mm. and catch up at the 5 at the 4-yard line. What a punt. And we will take our media timeout. But have no fear, when we come back, the West Georgia Wolves will take over and look to go 96 yards with it. And we'll hear from the third member of our broadcast, Cade Perrion, right after this on UWG Productions. financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice 
for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Well, back at it, University Stadium, Rayland Field, we have a 0-0 ball game. Trips to the left, Wesley Kennedy with a tight end there as well. They'll hand to Kennedy, right side, he's at the 10. He cuts back at the 15 at the 16-yard line before he's tackled in the open field by number 22, Ahmed uh, Ahmad Glass. And there you see Coach David Dean and the West Georgia Wolves. His 15th season overall, 121-43. and 43. Yeah, man, what a tenure in an era where, yeah. where coaching turnover is so frequent. A guy, 15 years in the business, great win-loss percentage, blessed to have him here. He is one of the best coaches I know and one of the best men I know. Whitlock, the pass, has LP wide open at the 30, caught it 35-40. And Le Perry on Perry catches it for a first down. LP is back, and he is our deep threat in the slot and kind of the outside as well, Coach. Yeah, man, I'm going to tell you that great play design right there. We talked about it in the opener. Coach Dean, Coach, uh, Coach Sadeski doing a great job early on getting some plays to help the young quarterback be successful. Trips bunch right, more out than by the numbers. Receiver to the left is LP. Whitlock going to throw quickly out to Javen West, and Javen slipped. Yeah. And I tell you what. Whitlock got hit hard. Give a hurry there to uh, big number eight. That is Damon Ely. Man, yeah, they, they've done a good job up front so far. But I'm going to tell you, it seems like the little things so far have kind of been going limestones way. Just a little slip there, and, and we're in plus yardage on second down. So, Coach, uh, they're huge. They'll start turning. <laughs> oh, that's one of the biggest teams I've seen. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap. Fake to Kennedy. Whitlock going to throw. Has LP at the 45, 50, 45 out of bounds. Tackle there. First down West Georgia after a gain of 15. And let's see if we can bring the third member of our crew in, Senor Cade Perry. And how are you, sir? Football is back, Matt. And look down here on the sidelines. I've got Carly Pear with me. I've got somebody to follow me around. Carly, have you learned anything yet? That's right. <laughs> Don't get hit by anybody and watch out for foreign smells. <laughs> Solid advice early on. Solid. We'll be talking to them periodically tonight. So glad to have Carly a part of the team and Cade Perry, and as always, two receivers right, one left. Hand off. Rajez Mosley around left side, 40. Rajez, 40, 35. Mm. Rajez out of bounds. And they're going to say he stepped out actually back at the 36. Not bad for his first carry back since last year he broke his arm. Coach. Tough physical run. A lot of running backs would have chosen to go out of bounds right there. He cuts it back, fights for three or four more yards. They don't count, but just the attitude to run aggressively right there. And, again, great job up front run blocking against those big guys from Limestone. This is Tyler. Uh, it's definitely not Tyler Davos. That's Eshawn Mace that just checked out. For us, we go four wides now, two to the left, two to the right. Steven Peterson in the ball game. Mosley stands beside Whitlock. Second and one, 2.50 to go first quarter. Hand to Mosley, right side. Mosley runs hard after a pancake block by Austin Donaldson. A little chippiness on the outsides, but a first down for the Wolves after a gain of four. Yeah, great blocking up front right there. We talked about senior-laden offensive line. Uh, the center right there, you mentioned him in the opener. Great job moving, moving the big boys up front. Same formation, two receivers to the right. That's Jerry Mays, our outside receiver. Now we'll go trips to the left. Zay Britt, Javen West, and Steve Peterson out there. Mosley stands to the right of Whitlock. Four, two, five, look, four. The Saints, seven, eight guys almost, and they're going to blitz on the outside left. Whitlock throws it to Peterson and couldn't get it to him. Mm. Just a little bit behind him. Yeah. Great check down, great 
uh, great check down by, yeah. P, uh, by yep. Whitlock, though. Everything done correctly right there. Ball a little bit behind him. Still got to come up with that catch right there. But early on, David Dean, offensive coordinator, Coach Sideski, dialed in. Good looks for the Wolves right here. And I'm going to tell you one thing to keep an eye on. Limestone already got some hands on some hips. It is hot. It is week one. But conditioning right now, they're not subbing a lot. They're looking a little slow right now. Two receivers to the left. We go empty, Coach. Mosley in the left uh, slot. Now he'll come in motion. Mosley now will go back beside Whitlock. Two minutes even here on a first quarter clock. Give to Mosley, left side, stiff arm. That was ugly. Mm. 25, 20, 15, Mosley 10, down to the five. That was a physical run by Rajez Mosley. My Grown goodness. man football right there. Point of attack early at the line of scrimmage. Scoots on out to the side. Monster, no, <laughs> manster stiff arm right there. Continues to run physical. Great blocking downfield again. Setting up our West Georgia Wolves with first and goal. Coach, number 99 from Limestone is listed at 300 pounds, and he just threw him off like a hula hoop. Impressive stuff right there. Impressive stuff. Trips right. Tight left is... Trey Williams will pitch it out. Mosley, right side, and he he just ham hammered uh, number three again, Kalen Clark, but got only a gain of one to the six-yard line. Yeah, if you'll look, if we catch us a replay right here, that, that play right there had an option to have a shovel pass underneath the number 34, Trey Williams, the fullback right yeah. there. Uh, I think it was the right read right there. It's the safer read anyway uh, from, from Ben Whitlock, but nevertheless, it brings up second goal from the six. 48 seconds to go. Second and goal. Ball standing at the six-yard line. We're in a pistol formation. Tight look to the right, Coach. We got tight bunch. two tights in the game, 12 personnel. Pitch out, Mosley, right side. He's got a hold. Great block, Brandon Pippen. Touchdown, Wolves. Rajas Mosley, welcome back, kid. You called it, my man. Two tight ends down at the bottom, the short side. Most teams typically don't attack the short side of the field. Great play call early on. That entire drive was absolutely beautiful by West Georgia. Punching it in on a toss sweep to the short side of the field. That is how we wanted to start this game, by scoring first. We've done so, and now we're going to set this thing up to go 7-0. 7 and 0. nothing. That's a 10-play, 96-yard drive, Coach. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> you can't go much further. We don't have an up man. Yeah, we're, we're missing one right here. Hopefully we don't burn a timeout. We'll just let the play clock run and kick a longer extra point. It's the right thing to do. And we're not calling a timeout. Looks like we got time. That's okay. That's the right thing to do. Lot, right thing to do. A lot, of, a lot of coaches may call a timeout right there. You're just may, you're, you're kicking a longer extra point. It's, it's still a give me. Let that play clock run out right there. But again, it's week one, Matt. You got some guys that are that are involved in the game and and they're they're doing other things on the sideline. So you expect some of these things to happen early on. So Brock Pellegrino will kick it. Pate Hogan will hold it. And Reed Reagan will snap it. And we'll go down to Cade Perry and get his thoughts on the drive right after this kick. Kick is up, end over end. Kick looks good because it is good. Tro uh, Wolf 7, Saints 0. Cade, what you got? I caught you there, yeah, Matt Skinner. Yes, yes you did. <laughs> Rajez is happy to be back. That's all I'm going to say. He, was, he came off that field pumped up. Hey. Rajez sat out, what, the last half of the year last yep. year, and I held his yep. Chucky doll all year. Yep. Well, Rajez is back, and you know what? Rajel, Rajez was running like a grown man. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. 27 seconds to go, and you were just on camera, Kay. You look good up there on the, the big uh, jumbotron. <laughs> well, it is a jumbo, Sean. Speaking of, <laughs> Kate, what is the temperature like down there? The sun has just dipped down behind the press box here. What, what, we, what are we feeling like? You know, it's not bad down here, honestly. I mean, it, you know, but what, the last month, Carly, it's felt like the surface of the sun. It's, it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> That's good. I, I will tell you this. It looks like conditioning-wise, West Georgia in a little bit better shape than Limestone early on, too. I don't know what they eat in the Limestone cafeteria, <laughs> but it's a lot. Look at this crowd. Look at this great crowd shot. Great great, great crowd tonight. Got the students. Got the band. Nothing's better than Dr. Kell Self and that West Georgia band. The sound that lights the South, Coach. I mean, that's it, man. I tell you, a lot, of, a lot of tailgating going on tonight, too, as I was pulling in. Football is back, and these folks are excited to watch it. It'd be a great night with a Wolves win and a Florida Gator loss. 
<laughs> Go Utes, baby. <laughs> Go Utes. 27 seconds on that first quarter clock. End over end kick. Who is going to be doing this kicking for us? Tyler Davalos, the freshman. Wobbly kick. Rolls all the way down to the eight and is taken there by the up man to the 25. And down he goes. And there's a flag on the play. Uh, Deontay Overstreet makes the stop along with J.B. Carlisle, oh, yeah. one of our uh, sophomore running backs coach, and he's out of uh, Oxford. Let's see what the ref says. Hold it. Turn team, number 90, 29. First down. So David White tells us holding on the return team. Now, I believe it's from the spot of the foul, which the – the foul incurred at the 18, Coach, they're going to be at the 9 to start. Yeah, it'll be a half the distance because they are inside the 20. We talked about those little things that kind of were looking like they were going limestones way early, now shifting on over to the good guys' side. Uh, this is where you want them. You want them to have to march a long way because their quarterback's been on tonight. So let's make them go a long way. Make them earn it. Trips to the right, one to the left. The defense bent but did not break on the last possession. Did a great job, kind of like West Georgia on their first offensive possession. High snap again. They get it out here to a receiver. A gain of maybe three as he runs out of bounds. As Where are they going to mark it? At the eight? No, at the uh, 12, 12-yard 12 12. line. Just a quick, simple wide receiver screen to kind of get the ball moving. Kind of surprised they're not going with tempo again after gaining positive well, yardage. it is the quarter. There wouldn't that would be why they're not going with tempo. Uh, not allowed. So, Hawk is our friend early on. So, yeah, just a quick wide receiver screen. Going to set them up with second down and six. Well, great work by our crew. We are 15 minutes into the football season, and the Wolves lead 7 to nothing. Back after this on UWG Productions. Back here, University Stadium, Rayland Field, and UWG Productions, where the Wolves lead 7 to nothing over the Limestone Saints. Coach, good first quarter for the Wolves. Just some quick numbers. Uh, we really ran the, ran the football on that last possession. We have 61 yards rushing. 
Yeah. Uh, good stats so far with trips to the left and tight right. They sing that slot receiver in motion. They'll hand to Trace. No, they throw it. Mm. What a play. And he caught it at the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, and out of bounds. They faked the handoff, they faked the swing pass, and they just dumped it off to the tight end on the end of the line of scrimmage, and we never accounted for them. Yeah, but a little bit of a busted coverage there, knowing who's got the tight end coming off the line of scrimmage. Didn't get our hands on him either. He had a free release and was, was out there, but great hustle to bring him down. Local kid Ben Fortson out of about makes the stop. Here comes quarterback. Oh, he lost it. He lost it. Ball's on the ground, and it's a fumble, and we pick it up. At midfield, there's going to be a holding call, so this should stand. We're still scrubbing in there. I haven't seen the official yeah. give a signal yet. I haven't seen him come out and hold his hand one way or the other. Abu Bangura made the stop. Yeah, they're yeah. going to give it to West Georgia. When he went to throw the ball, Coach, here we'll see on the yep. UWG Productions instant replay, he just never had the ball. The Let's play. see. Hold it. Office number 73. Nope. Yeah. That's a fumble. Gets out there, breaks contain, okay. and a guy that we talked about that struggled at times last year has made a mistake, goes the Wolves' way. Now we've got an opportunity to kind of put a foot on the gas right here. Going to have a first down at midfield, only 50 yards to go to go up two scores early in the second quarter. Abu Bangura made the, inter or made the uh, reception or the picked up the fumble. Yeah. Well, we'll take it how we can get it, baby. Let's go Wolves. We'll head down to Cade and see if he's ever seen anything like this after this next play. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Trey Williams at the end of the line of scrimmage going deep ball, and Whitlock has to just dump it off to Williams at the 45. Trey Williams at the 42-yard line. We made something out of nothing right there, Coach. Yes, sir, and that I'll play, be honest. That play broke down quickly. The offensive line did that. They brought an extra man, so it was hat on a hat. Uh, you know, the, the pocket kind of collapsed, but everybody stayed on a block, and it allowed Whitlock to get free from there and find the open man out in the flats. Cade, you seen a quarterback lose the ball like that <laughs> before? I was running for my life, so no. Uh, I didn't see him do anything. You look good doing I tell you, I, I mean, Nick, you sound really good up there, sound really educated. It's You're nice to have you up here in the, the higher education side of, of, of things in, in radio. Well, I appreciate that. We'll fake it. Going to throw it out. Recall, this is Marquise Bridges, a first down across mm. the 40 at the 35-yard line. Marquise lost his helmet. Just yep. that jet's motion again, and we throw it out to him. I mean, so, we're, you know, things look different in 2023, but, again, that is a basic two-point play. You bring the guy in motion, you get him out in the flats, and one of those three guys should come open. David Dean, Coach uh, Sideski calling a great first half of offensive football right now. 13.25 to go here in quarter number two. Receivers two to the left, one to the right. We'll go uh, – that's Zach Obie. No, that's not Obi. That's 83. Uh, that's Eshawn Mays, tight left. We'll hand Wesley Kennedy right side. He stutters at the line of scrimmage, gets to the 30. My goodness, what kind of speed does Wesley Kennedy have? He has got a burst. Ooh. I'm going to say it. That, that play was not there. That was not where that ball was intended to go. But when you can run like that, you can put the ball where you want to. <laughs> He's got to the 29-yard line, a gain of six, second and four. We'll bring out an offensive yeah. lineman, big number 70, Sam Regina. And who is this uh, that came? I didn't see who came in yeah, for him, Coach. that as well. I but I did well. see that we brought in number three, T.J. Lockley on the outside along with LP. And here comes Trey Williams in motion to the left slot. We'll hand outside Wesley Kennedy. Kennedy, nice block mm. by LP. It's coming back, 25-20, 19-yard line. But there is a flag on the play. I'm afraid it will be in the penalty of a holding call. Yeah, that's where it's thrown right there. And I was, you know, before that flag come out, I was going to talk about how good the offensive line looked right there, and there may have been a reason for it. Let's see what our official David White has to say. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Defense oh. number eight. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic. First down. So we were exactly wrong. We yes. like being wrong with yes. that. Damon Ely with the illegal hands to the face. And that's a call that has been more frequent in the last five, six, seven years of college football. Defensive lineman not allowed just to jack up an offensive lineman's face, and that one goes in our favor. So tack that on to the end of the run. Wolves are looking to punch it in again. First and goal, ball on the 10, the worst place to have first and goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you did, if there's a positive, you got a little bit more space to work with here. That is true. 
LP is our lone receiver to the right. We're bunched up trips to the left. Wesley Kennedy, watch counter here, coach, or throwing it. Whitlock looking across the middle. He throws a pick. Threw a pick in the back of the end zone at the 5, at the 10, 15, out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Intercepted back of the end zone by number 24. Number 24, that's John Gregory, the graduate transfer. Makes yeah. the stop. Or great, makes the interception. Great play by the safety right there. Whitlock just stayed locked on to his first receiver, the one read right there, which does happen when you're a young quarterback, especially down there on the goal line. You should have, they, uh, excuse me, Limestone gave a look like they may have <laughs> played some covers. Wow, <laughs> what that. the turnover pimp cane? <laughs> what is that? Uh, okay. Uh, you know, that's one way to, to celebrate on the sidelines, I guess. Nick but. White, let's talk about the wrestling garb. <laughs> yeah, we don't wear the exact same things that they've got down there on Limestone sideline. Macho man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Three to the left, one to the right. Handoff, mm. Stewart gets about five up to the 25-yard line, and Stewart will be met there by Jalen Tarver. The senior out of AC Flora High School, home to our good friends of Willie Candler. His uh, aunt lives in uh, lives over there in AC or went to AC Flora. We miss you, Willie. I'm glad to have Coach White here tonight, but we yeah. still miss Willie. Got a tight end to the right, trips to the left. Look for a run coming back to this tight end side. Bring a man in motion. High snap. They pull it. RPO. They throw it out to the left. We'll make a couple of uh, – he'll make a man miss and get across the 30 for a first down to the 32. Looks like Jeremy Smith made the stop for us, along with Jet Lee, who's a little shaken up after that play. Uh, good good play design, I guess. Again, I'm 0 for 1 now on predicting plays tonight. And that's because of the RPO. I don't want to go there because we run it too. Uh, but they got us on that one. Coach is a defensive guy. He has specific words he does not need to use on the broadcast for RPOs. <laughs> Hand, uh, fakes the handoff, looking across the middle and over the head of the intended receiver, number four. That's Jelani Baker, the former Wolf. Michael Merriweather in coverage for us. Great work by the Wolves. Uh, D back to be running st step for step with Jelani. Yeah, you know that was a it was an odd play call right there from Limestone. It was three verts, and then the rest stayed in on pass pro. So not four verts, but three verts. West Georgia in the right spot. We rotate a lot of guys, Coach, and especially in the first half, you'll see a lot of different guys rotating. High snap again. Seen that a couple of times. Smith, the handoff, busted. 40, 45, 50. Tripped up by Jeremy Smith, but not before a gain of about, what, 17. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. You know, you go RPO, 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 and then you run halfback counter. You pull the guard, you get him out in front, and now they're going hurt, hurry up. We're running guys off the field. Trey Loveless just gets off. Coming off the outside, Ben Holder sacks Keandre Williams. That's two for that young man tonight, if I'm counting correctly. What a great effort right there, especially in the face of the hurry up. Just gave up a big play, and to get off of a block right there and create a negative play completely shuts down the momentum for Limestone and slows down what they're doing on the offensive side of the ball. Dustin Noller could not escape Keandre Williams. And these offensive linemen, Coach, are tired. It's okay to run hurry up, but you got to remember, you've got 300-pound grown <laughs> men Yeah, when you're <laughs> up six, there eight, as well. Three, 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 18, there ain't a lot of hurrying, <laughs> and you ain't getting up a whole lot. Second and uh, Rootville, second, uh, second and 17. Trips to the left, tight right. They'll run the drag route underneath as Noller uh, he'll run, and he'll get hit right at midfield Very and good fall open field forward. Tackle. Yeah, great open field tackle. That's 37 for us, Micah Coach. Micah Thurman. Yeah, Micah Thurman out of Northside Warner Robins High School. He is beefed up since his freshman year last year. Yeah, and it's third 12. He was one-on-one -on -one in the open field with a pretty good athlete right there. Wraps up, brings him to the ground. Didn't Not a highlight real tackle, but one that is big for West Georgia. Ain't no way Dustin Noller is 205 pounds. <laughs> he's if he's thicker. 205 pounds, I'm 205 pounds. High snap again. Noller has to step up in the pocket. Going to take off and run. He'll slide. Thank goodness we don't hit him. Whew, that was close. Quarterback gave himself up. Oh, they are going to say he gave himself up at the 42-and-a-half-yard line. He yeah. sure enough did. That's the proper call, proper spot. But it looks like it's fourth down in no man's land right here. I would not be yeah. surprised to see those guys go for it. 
think Limestone pretty upset that there was no flag thrown there, and maybe so, but we didn't make contact. It looked, it looked like we did, and fourth down, watch out, don't get drawn offside. You might even see a quick kick right here. Would not either be surprised to see them run down and call a timeout toward the end of the play clock as there's five seconds yeah. left on that. And that's what we're going to get. And I'm assuming we'll take our first media timeout of the second quarter right here, right? I see Kevin Hemphill, so that means, yes, we first will. Out of the first half. With 8-12 to go here in quarter number two, the Limestone Saints have a decision to make. Find out what happens next on UWG Productions. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. All right, Coach, for the first time in uh, University Stadium history, Division II football here, we're going to have replay. And to be completely honest with you, and maybe Kate has an idea of what it could be, but I'm thinking it's just the spot. I mean, that's about all they can challenge, right, the spot? That's all I can think. I don't know if Cade saw something else, but I know uh, head coach Limestone, Mike Furry, waited They're to the absolute. They're checking for targeting. Okay, okay. Challengeable offense, apparently. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, they would not review that. So, yeah, it is a challengeable offense. Uh, we'll see what the call is. I didn't see we're any not contact. A, we're not allowed to see the replay, are we? Is that the rule still? Because I know in basketball we weren't we weren't allowed to see the replays. Right. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You're talking to the wrong guy as yeah. far as that goes. But I do know that the, the coach waited till the very last second uh, coming out of the media timeout there to throw the challenge flag. So he did have a long time to communicate with his coaches in the box. We do have a replay for it, and here it comes. What do you think, coach? Targeting or no targeting? Well, I think a lot's going to have to do with when he gives himself up here. I think that's going to have to have a lot to do. He Nowhere. now becomes defenseless there. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be a tough one to call targeting. There was some contact to his helmet, but again, he waited till the very last second to give himself up. He was not a defenseless runner until the very end. So I don't think it's targeting, and that's not because I'm sitting here wearing blue and red tonight. Cade Perry, what do you think? Well, we're going to go ahead and – I'm okay, trying to figure ahead. out what the heck's going on. They're, they're, call, they're, they're looking for targeting. Did you see targeting on that last play? I, I, I didn't. No, he, went, <laughs> he went down quickly. I mean, I, I saw our guy kind of go over uh, the quarterback as, as opposed to – you know, he could have yeah. – if he wanted to, yeah. but well, he didn't. We're going to have a very frustrated David Dean. We're going to take our <laughs> – if they call targeting <laughs> we here. We may be having <laughs> technological issues yeah. under the <laughs> Gulf South Conference tent. Well, we'll find out more. We're taking our second media and being right back, right after this on UWG Productions.
Whatever they went through, they went through together. Welcome, guys. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice. For life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Well, they decided it was not targeting, so the red flag has been discarded by Coach Fury, and we'll get to him in just a moment. But nonetheless, fourth down, uh, we got our punt safe on the field right yeah, here, Coach. That's what you should do right here as well. 7 nothing. Wolves lead over the Saints. They're going to get the ball back. Brian Frey to punt it, the former Villarica Wildcat. Nicely done, end over end. Fair catch is called for and made inside the 10 by J.J. Edwards. Or, uh, no, that's Wesley Kennedy. Yeah, 12. Sorry. Yeah. No, both uh, both punt teams have done a tremendous job. It was the third or fourth punt we've seen down inside the 10-yard uh, the line tonight. So, uh, last time that happened to our West Georgia squad, we went 96 yards. Let's do it again. Sounds, sounds this like time we're going to go 92 yards. Let's see. TJ Lockley out here to the left. Two receivers, uh, three receivers now to the right. We've got Je uh, Cam Saunders out there. Mm -hmm. LP's out there. And big Marquise Bridges, just a sophomore. Rajas Mosley back there. Look who's at quarterback, Coach. Cam Brown. Look at there. Cameron Brown. The sophomore out of north side. Takes and hands to Rajez Mosley. That's never a bad idea as Mosley gets across the 10, the 11, maybe to the 12. Coaches are really high on Cam Brown, coach, and we got an offensive lineman down. I'm going to say led the way right there with 77, Brevin Jones. He happens to be the young man that's down. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. He's Ooh. up walking off under his own power. So David Bodden going to come in. So David Bodden will come in, and then Bailey Kennedy will go to left tackle. So Biden will move to back down to center. Yeah, good first call to have a you know brand new quarterback taking his first snap. Just a little zone read action. West Georgia picks up three and a half, four yards. We go uh, H back right. Cam Brown at quarterback. We got a tight right. Two receivers to the right. Straight run. Cam Brown, big physical run, but couldn't get anywhere. As big number ninety nine, Colin Vaughn, the graduate, makes the stop for a lo uh, loss of a yard, and it's. Going to be third down. Yeah, obviously you can see what Cam brings to the table right there, trying to get the ball in his hands uh, to make a good uh, run. But, you know, hats off to Limestone right there. Played it very well and brings up a, a third and long. Two receivers each side. Rogers Mosley standing beside Brown. Ball touching the 10. We've got to get to the 18-yard line. Pressure. They do bring a nice blitz. Brown steps up and is going to go down. We didn't block the rush. As Colin Vaughn makes another stop, and it's fourth down. Yeah, zone blitz right there out of Limestone. They showed like they were bringing six or seven, brought five, but where they brought them from uh, confused the offensive line just a little bit, definitely confused the quarterback, uh, seeing some linebackers drop out in coverage right there. Couldn't find a place to get the football to, and we're going to have to kick it away. So down goes Cam Brown. Six minutes and three seconds to go. Punt formation, Reed Reagan to snap it, Riley Mason to boom it. We need a boomer right here, Riley. We got a cover. And he 
Booms one to the 45 of West Georgia. Makes a man miss. The 40, the 35. That should be illegal participation. Number 28 was blocking and running downfield with his helmet off. But nonetheless, they won't call it. Yep. yep. And That's, we were in a tight punt formation right there. Yeah. Tight ends and, and, and up backs, and that was it. So it's tough to cover right there. And there you see Coach Mike Fury, who has lost his red flag for the night after the coach's challenge. But Coach Fury... Pretty successful, fourth overall season in his second season as the head coach at Limestone, and not bad job taking him to the playoffs in his first year. Yep, he's done a pretty good job. Their offenses look pretty tough, and they're in a good spot right now. Two receivers left, one right, H-back right, Smith at running back. They'll hand mm. it off, and we go with the quarterback instead of the running back, and it goes off as it's Trey Stewart for – the run to the 27-yard line and a gain of eight. Yeah, number eight, Mason Huntley on the on the blitz right there, just ran right by running back coming right underneath him. Same formation. They'll keep it this time. RPO now, and that's a fumble. That's a fumble. Pick go, it up go, and go, run. Go, go. Oh, oh, they're going to say it's incomplete. I thought it was a fumble. It was close. It was right down that line. You had me believing it, too, Ooh. if it makes, makes you feel any better. You had me believing it as well. Well, Brandon Booker was there. He thought it was a fumble, and he was running. Yeah, hey, look, you got to make him blow the whistle. Here's the UWG Productions instant replay. I don't know. We can probably see it from here. It's close, but tough angle. It'll be third down and two. It's two I down would, territory. It here. is two down territory, I would assume, with 5.14 to go here in the second quarter. They're changing the play call. Yeah, that's a blocking scheme. Here we come. Smith going to get it. We hit him in the backfield. He lost a couple of yards. Jeremy Great. Smith, Mason Huntley, Deontay Overstreet. Uh, who else? Uh, Amos Trey, Don. Trey Loveless in yeah. there. Amos, Amos, Amos Don also. Great job. That was the exact same play that Limestone earlier had ripped off a 17-yard run. Well, halfback counter, you see it right here on the replay. We blew that thing up. The guy that made the play at the bottom of the pile is number eight, the guy who had just over-pursued earlier. He's able to take on the uh, kick-out block and the Wolves rally to the football. Big fourth down, Matt. Fourth and four, 436, 435 and counting. Two receivers each side. They bring a man in motion. High snap again. Going to throw, and he caught it right at the line of, right at the line to gain, and he's going to get it. We didn't cover him out of the backfield. That was number three, Doug Washington, first down Saints across the 25 to the 24. Yep, found the spot in the zone right there. We played a little zone behind it. Brandon Booker gets there just a shade too late. Got to identify that guy coming out of the backfield. But here we go, first down, limestone. At what, what are we on, our 19? Yeah, the 24. The 24 numbers. 24 numbers. Two receivers left, two tight right. They're going to run it to the right with Smith, and we do a good job coming up and making the tackle with Booker. Nice work by Brandon Booker, the and senior D-back. Great job. My man Ted Lasso says you got to be a goldfish. You get lost in coverage, you play before, and you come down, you make a great play <laughs> right here. Goldfish got the shortest memory of any animal. you got to forget about bad plays and then go make a play. Great job right there, young man, coming up and calling your own number the very next play. They had a Ted Lasso quote from Yeah, big goldfish, baby. Short memory. Keep playing. Coach Nick White, folks. <laughs> Receiver to each side. Two tight ends, ones to each side. Snap. The play action pass. No oh, Noler looking. He's got a man open in the mm. end zone. Caught touchdown. Mm. Delivered it off to number eight, Mikey Jones, the junior wide out. And the Saints answer back. It's seven to six. Great play design right there. Uh, had some guys get lost a little bit. Uh, really, it was like a backside post uh, that they ran right there, and he kind of got free and uh, didn't have a chance to catch up to him. Good no, play design. No safety over the top. It no. was Carson Yancey on an island, and you're exactly right, Coach. Just a little play action, and again, it's the backside wide receiver coming all the way across the field. Tough ask on the DB right there, but you gotta got to be able to be there. Lefty kicker wearing number four, A.J. Haynes. If a kicker wears number four, he's got to be good, right? Well, I'll be and honest with you. he missed it wide left. <laughs> you nailed it. Great job by Matt Skinner <laughs> jinxing the kicker right there. We'll take it. Guys, if this is a one-point ball game later tonight, Matt Skinner, player of the game. <laughs> That's one of the best jinxes I have seen. 
Well, Coach, if you're a kicker and you come out wearing number four, you better be one, an athlete, well, and two. What number are you supposed to wear? <laughs> you know? What number are you supposed to wear as the kicker? 99. So, look, here's the replay right here, a little play-action pass to the right. And, again, it's just that backside wide receiver coming all the way across the field. Uh, but at the end of the day, special teams are special. West George is up one right now, 311 left in the half. Got enough time to go put some points on the board and would really like to do so because we got to kick off to these guys in the second half. Six plays, 35 yards. I thought I saw Judah White. Did he leave? Yeah, no, they are, they're up here floating around somewhere, <laughs> coming off a big 29-8 to victory over the freshman East Coweta. Guys, Carrollton Trojans, baby. Carrollton. Nice. 29, East Coweta freshman, eight. So, back deep, LP, LaPerion Perry, and Wesley Kennedy kicking off for Limestone. Your hero. They just know that they, no. they're, now their other kickers wearing number two. What is this? Yeah, I mean, kickers are players too, athletes. Daniel Deneen wearing number two. The deuce. <laughs> Let's see what kind of kick we get from Daniel Deneen. A good one. End over end. Going to send LP back. Five yards, and he'll let it bounce for a touchback coach. And this is not the first time these two teams have met. Back on September the 14th, a week after our birthdays. There we go. They got the win 24-14, where they lead the series 2-0 all time. Yeah, never lost a game to these guys. Hopefully we can continue to do that tonight. Um, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. I will say this. We've went ahead and put uh, starter Ben Whitlock back in the game. Three minutes, 11 seconds left to go. Uh, you know, West Georgia looking to come down and put on some points before the half. And again, we got the speedster in the backfield again, number 12. Wesley Kennedy. Two receivers each side. Snap handled by Whitlock. And he has T. Cole open. And yep. he can't get it to him. We had two guys open over there. LP on a little six-yard out. And uh, T. Cole running down the sideline just couldn't get it to him. And it'll be second and ten. But yeah, we when, do go back to Whitlock here. Yeah, a little bit more of a uh, of a uh, difficult throw. He, he had an easier check down right there, but wanted something a little bit bigger. Just couldn't fit it in. Cover two on the backside from Limestone there. It's a tough throw to make on we the We need to line. fix the scoreboard. It's seven to six. It is seven to six. We'll get it fixed. I promise. Well, here you in that. the stadium, they need to fix it. Two is this seven. It's nine to seven on the scoreboard here. We'll hand to Kennedy up the middle. Wesley Kennedy across the thirty, dragging a wimpy Saint across the thirty-four to the near the thirty-five. It depends on the spot. If he got the first down, it's going to be third and yeah, short. Spot, spot and it's just a little short, but you know, not only has he got some speed, there was a little bit of aggression, a little power in that run as well. Third manageable. Would not be surprised whatsoever to see us go right back on the ground. A little bit of a no huddle look right here. Would not be surprised. Got four men on the front for Limestone. Whitlock hands to Kennedy. Can we get a yard? Falls forward. Ball's out. Ball is out according to Limestone. I thought I saw something fall out, but number zero. I the ball did get, come out. Yeah, but we are going to get the though. first down, and that was close. Yes, right on the line to Ooh. gain spot from the other side of the field as well. So we thank you, sir. We needed 12 inches. We got 13. <laughs> I don't know if we got that many. <laughs> we're right on the line to game. But at any rate, two minutes left. We got the ball first down, and we're moving, baby. A little two-minute drill time at the 35-yard line. Two receivers to the left or to the right going from right to left. Well, hand to Kennedy. Can he get outside? He makes a man miss. Face mask, and then... Everybody wants a face mask. Coach Dean's begging for one, and I don't see a flag come out. He got nothing on the game. Not getting one right there. I uh, thought we had the corner early, but great job by Limestone closing the space right there, coming to the short side of the field. Uh, good news is we did not lose anything, but, yeah, could have been a face mask right there. Three to the right, one to the left, 150 to go. Second quarter. Whitlock with Kennedy beside him. Whitlock looking to throw, going to throw a 95-mile-per-hour fastball to Wesley Kennedy, and he couldn't come up with it. And maybe he's glad he didn't because he was going to meet the other number 12, Chandler mm -hmm. Matthews. Yeah, he, he was closing very quickly right there. You catch the football, you're one-on-one -on -one with a very explosive, quick athlete. I like our chances in space right there, but we've got to complete the catch before we can get upfield and go. Confusion on the back end right now for Limestone. Two receivers each side. 
We get them to jump. We're going to have a free play. Going to have a free play, and it doesn't matter. They make the sack. And yeah, if you jump off sides, you better make a play. Yeah. Uh, but that will stop the clock enough for us to move the football, be a third and five, much more manageable situation. But great job with the young quarterback. Hard count right there, getting two guys to jump off sides. You've got to do some things to help give your guys some chances. And when those guys, they've been pinning their ears back all night. So it's good to go to a hard count right there. Uh, go there on to change up the snap. Play, both against the defense. Encroachment on the defense, five yard penalty. Force. Illegal substitution, 12 men on the field on the defense. To be declined. Yardage results in the first down. So not only were they off sides, but they had 12 uh, Saints on the field. They still had 12 Saints. They're finally running one more off. Yeah, in the words of the student section, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, but it allows West Georgia, again, third and manageable right here. Five or less is, is a good opportunity. Your entire playbook's really open right here. So uh, Limestone bailing us out. Three receivers right, one to the left. Mosley with them. 139 to go, second quarter. Third and five. Got to get to the 45-yard line of West Georgia. Our own 45. Fun we, little formation up top. Yeah, we stacked the slot guys. And then T. Cole on the outside with, it looks like, Zay Britt on the left. Bringing the Mike Blitz. He comes up to the line. Now they back off. Bring four. Whitlock looking. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Throws underneath to Zay Britt. And Zay Britt can't make the play. Ball was way underthrown. Yeah. And... And it's going to be fourth down, and we're going to have to punt it. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason you're not going to get a call right there is the ball was considerably underthrown. Great formation dial-up right there to get both outside wide receivers and some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Unfortunately, we had some pressure come straight up the gut right there, forced an early throw and didn't get enough on it, which ultimately is why we're going to punt the ball away on fourth down with a minute 15 left in the half. Yeah, we're running the punt team out there quickly, and we might take a delay here. Looks like we will take a delay here. Coach Dean's actually going to call a timeout. So. Yep, yeah, got the timeout before the play clock ran out right there. I think he's going to ask them to actually reset it and say that they never did. So we may save a timeout. Veteran move from Coach David Dean right here if that happens. There is no foul for delay of game. There was a mixed function in the play clock. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. So, yeah, and when you're a head coach since 2007, you, you, you have attention to detail. That's exactly what happened. They didn't reset the play clock. We keep our timeout. So 7-6, to six, Wolves lead with 1.15 to go. Great snap, Riley Mason. Booms it. Past the 20-yard line to the 18, and that's where they'll set up with Clark. And then a huge tackle on the open mm. field. My goodness, Steve Number Peterson. 11. Steven Peterson makes the stop, who was Justin Fields' favorite target to go to in high school. Now, things that you probably did not know until about seven seconds ago. But I tell you what, <laughs> special teams, special West Georgia has executed well tonight. Great kick right there. Good coverage downfield. you got to make those open field tackles, and this kind of helps – at least I think Limestone's going to think about getting this thing to the half, knowing that they get the football uh, to start the second half. But we'll see how they come out here. What do you do? Take a run. If you get a couple of yards, make a make a pass. West Georgia with two timeouts. I mean, I'm putting the ball in the hands of my athlete quarterback who, who threw for 2,500 yards last year. I, RPO look right here is where I'm going. I'm doing what I've kind of done all night. Two receivers each side. Snap, they're going for, for the home run ball. Now it'll take off, and that's behind the line. That's behind. Ball's out. Ball's loose. Scooped up at the 25. No, they couldn't mm, get it. Couldn't get it. The Saints pick it up. It was number one, Ty Quell, or Trey Stewart, who fumbled it. And then number nine from us, Ben or, uh, Kamayan Fagans tried to scoop it and never had it. Man, oh. Could have been a huge play right before the half right there. You take the positive, though. West Georgia, excellent on the back end coverage-wise. Forced the quarterback to find his outlet, and there they were right on the spot, forcing the fumble, just unlucky right there. Oh. Not able to come up with the ball. Xavier Robinson forced it. Eight seconds on the play clock, 18 seconds on the game clock. Hands to Stewart up the middle, 
and he somehow bounced it outside to the 28-yard line. And I think yeah, that will be Keandre Williams. Yeah, Keandre Williams makes the stop, and that'll do it. We'll get Cade Perry in to meet up with Coach Dean right before the half. That is the end of the first half. So we'll go down to Cade with the camera in the end zone on the right side. And we'll keep it here. We'll talk halftime stats and a whole lot more. But the Wolves lead 7-6, to six, a defensive battle so far, Coach. Yeah, I mean, we knew this was going to be a pretty good game. Both teams were really basically playoff game, uh, teams from last year. Uh, good, good scrap early on. Special teams, the difference. I know Cade's doing his best to corral yeah. Coach Dean right Coach there. Coach is at the 20. Yep. He's at the 16, 15, and he is making his way to Senor Kate Perry and Carly Pear down on the sidelines. Carly. Oh, we go with Carly. All right, go Carly. Thank you, thank you, Carly. We appreciate that. Sorry for the, the technical difficulties there, but we nonetheless will take you to halftime, Coach, and we'll come back here in about 18 minutes or so here on UWG Productions and break down the first half for you. We'll take it from there here at University Stadium back in 18 minutes right after this. Tell Logan to come in in 10, 9, 8, eight 7, seven six, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, two 1. Go, Logan. And we're back. UWG Productions is a student-led organization where the students are playing a big part in broadcasts of sports and other student events, but it's mostly the sports like volleyball and football and soccer. But the students are entirely like leading the production and the project. Um, and it, it allows us to get like really good hands-on experience and, and it's really fun. We just kind of have fun with it. My favorite part about UWG Productions is how hands-on we can be right when we start. My favorite part is how it was instantly hands-on from day one. I can say that having the hands-on experience that I did through this organization absolutely padded my resume, absolutely made me a more communicative leader, made me a better team member, and made me a better filmmaker as a whole. It's not like we have to, you know, sit back and shadow somebody for a long time. We get to jump right in because it is a student-led uh, production team. So I think that's my favorite part about it, how we get to be so hands-on with, with all the equipment. I think it's the greatest learning atmosphere on campus where you, don't, you can have no skills and you can come on, try it, you can keep learning. There'll be somebody on your shoulder, you got somebody in your headset telling you like, hey, frame it this way, and you start learning. And I just thought that was the greatest experience kind of getting thrown in the fire, see what you got, and then we'll learn based on that. It was a, hey, here's the camera. We're gonna go to a practice, and if you mess up, you mess up, and that's okay, now you know. And so that's something that I really liked about incorporating new students into the, the family. <laughs> well, I mean, I love the school as itself, but it was just really cool to be able to find like my niche. Like, they had exactly what I wanted, so. If you're really into live production, like sports, and especially like camera stuff, i definitely say come in and get your hands on that because it's a really good opportunity. And I don't think a lot of other places offer that, but it's really special that UWG does. We need to get that on camera. That could be a good video. Yeah, that could be a nice little package right there. Yeah, Alex Moore walking in together. We're always just like, let's pour it in the trash. Hello Wolves fans, I'm Micah Noel and thank you for watching WTV Two Minute News Brief. As the semester kicks off, the university continues to grow. University of West Georgia's campus is back in full effect and enrollment status is too. 
Popular places such as the TLC, UCC, and Love Valley expect to see a larger student population. According to senior admissions representative Maria Rodriguez Martinez, the school's lead indicators reveal the population is up 15% compared to the fall 2022 semester. With a 19% increase in transfer students and 80% increase in dual enrollment students, admissions no longer anticipate losing new students, thanks to the university's improved enrollment and retention rates. The state of Georgia awarded the University of West Georgia with a resounding $1 million grant to improve the safety and security of the entire university. According to UWG Police Chief Dr. George Ned Watson, the campus cameras, alarms, and portable alert system will be updated with this notable funding. The money will also be put towards the Live Safe app or some other emergency alert application. The University Police Department expects the improvements to be completed by spring 2024. The University of West Georgia installed new 3D signs just before the fall 2023 semester began. The updated signs are in the school's vibrant colors, red and blue, and they spell out UWG. At nighttime, the signs light up, making it easier for students and visitors to locate each entrance on campus. The new signs create a fun, attractive site for everyone to see and are a nice way to welcome our new pack. The University System of Georgia held a study revealing that UWG generated over $633 million for Georgia's economy within the past year. This money, seen locally, regionally, and statewide, was tracked from July 2021 to June of 2022. This unequaled number is a result of increased student spending and job creation due to the university's own spending. This economic increase aligns with the university's strategic plan of becoming a first choice university. Thank you for watching WTV News Brief. Have fun at the game, and remember, go West, go Wolves. Welcome to the pack. 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 University of West Georgia students, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. I am Tyler McCoy, your 71st student body president. Our university is a community that thrives on the contributions of all its members, a place where diversity in thought and experience is not only encouraged, but celebrated. Our goal in the McCoy Frisk administration is to ensure that this vibrant tapestry of voices is adequately represented in your student government association. We are deeply committed to creating an SGA that reflects the full range of your student body to that end, we are actively working on an action plan to promote diversity, inclusivity, and broad participation in our student government. We want to see an SGA that is not just for the select few, but one where everyone's voice matters, where everyone can have a say in sharing our shared future. At the same time, we recognize that our SGA must be a relevant and meaningful part of your everyday lives. We are committed to increasing our visibility on campus not just as a governing body, but a resource for each one of you. As a part of our plan, we aim to create signature programs that can provide real value to you as students. These programs will be geared towards addressing your needs, your aspirations, and the challenges you face. We are here to serve you, and we want to work to make a tangible difference in your UWG experience. I believe in the power of student government as a force for positive change as a bridge that connects the administration and the students, and as a platform for student voices. Our mission in the McCoy Frisk administration is to build an SGA that truly lives up to these ideals, but we cannot do it alone. We need your insights, your perspectives, and your active participation. Let's work together to build a brighter future for our UWG community. Thank you, and let's make this a great year. Go Wolves. Thank <laughs> you.
or hall are you with? I'm a freshman and I'm with University Suites. We're AB 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 <laughs> I'm here with the Villages, the Kappa Alpha Order. The one and only all review. How has your experience been at uh, Battle of the Hall so far? It's been good, very loud, love the spirit. Listen, the energy is high and it is crazy out here. So if you haven't been, you gotta make sure you come. It's been good. We just won that last game. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. All right, and what event were you guys just doing just now? So we just did a tug of war. Yeah. yeah it got a little heated and they were pulling and then the rope just snapped. It was it was crazy. Can you show us the evidence right there? Yeah. So. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is half of the rope. You know, it was a lot of alpha male energy over there. Um, we didn't expect that. We were just running it back, but you know, we just too strong. We live. to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest. That will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me. Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups, and over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey, y'all. My name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our net sound. 
for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our cameras feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions YouTube page. Bye! <laughs> Ponytail on the top of the fountain ponytail. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Are you taking pictures or video? That's video. Oh. <laughs> loading. <laughs> what can loading? 2022. Oh yeah. <laughs> sell it. Sell it, Grace. 2022. We're so happy to be here. The Anagama kind of came from a lineage of. Uh, Japanese cave kilns, that's what anagama means is cave kiln. And that technology found its way through Korea to Japan and then the Japanese perfected it to uh, the kind of current state that it's in now. So yeah, that's it in general, wood fire, wood's the fuel. Wood has been the fuel for firing ceramics for centuries. The wood ash in this case becomes the glaze that accumulates on the pieces. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds We were just talking about uh, glaze chemistry today in class, and art in general, regardless of the uh, discipline, is undergirded with all kinds of science, physics, chemistry. Yeah, it's all, the, it's all of the above, really. I think art is one of the uh, disciplines, the pursuits, where it's all in there. We might not see it, but, and maybe we should more all the students we start at square one every semester no wood empty kiln you know typically the kilns in some state of disrepair from the last firing so we fix it we clean it we tend to everything we arrange we organize we stage we go through the whole process there's shifts uh, everyone has a four hour shift uh two four hour shifts excuse me that they're responsible for so it's, it's everything from kind of life skill managing, um, following through to uh, all the nitty gritty. But I think the real transformative thing is, is the, the people, the transformation that occurs with them. Um, I've had students that were, didn't want to do, didn't want to get near this thing. They were afraid of it. It's, you know, it's like you're right up against the sun and you have to wear protective gear and there's a, there's a fear factor. <laughs> trademark, copyright. Um, so students, uh, you know, overcome a lot of things and they, they walk away with, like they did that. We did that. It was a big thing and we did that. So it lays the groundwork for a lot of other things to occur when they're not here, when they graduate, when they do the next thing they're going to do.
All right, welcome back in University Stadium, Raylan Field. As we get you ready for second half action, as you see the Wolves running back onto the field. Coach got to have a sense of urgency coming out of the half. Limestone gets the ball to start. We lead seven to six, but very imperative that we start off on the right note. Yeah, I mean, it's an old adage, but it's true. The first five minutes of each half are the most important parts of the football game. We'll start this one on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, just kind of breaking down some of the first half statistics provided by my guy, Jared Boggess, right here. As you can imagine, in a 7-6 to six ball game, things are pretty even. Total yardage, uh, limestone with 164. We've got 158. We're a little bit better on the ground. They're a little bit better through the air. But other than that, things are pretty doggone similar with the exception of a missed extra point. That's literally the difference. They've thrown for 116 yards. We've only thrown for 65. Yeah, I mean, and, but, we're, uh, and we're running the ball at a good clip, and, and they have uh, they've hit a couple of runs, but we really have controlled the line of scrimmage, I feel like. Yeah, we've played well in run fits. They've had a couple of big runs. They have not played as well as we have as far as run fits are concerned, but I feel like they, they've got a few more quarterback hurries than we do at this point. So, again, it's going to determine on which team made the best halftime adjustments as far as X's and O's are concerned, who's going to protect the football. And really, the key to the second half, Matt, is going to be number nine, Ben Whitlock, being able to make some plays with his arm. If we can get some passing game to go along with the run game we've gotten so far, I feel pretty good about our ab ability to put the ball in the end zone, produce some points. Yeah, how about uh, Keandre Williams there in that first half, Coach? He, five tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss. He yeah. was very good on the on the defensive side of the ball for us. Uh, was definitely a noticeable presence, was everywhere on the field. Couple of sacks, a uh, couple of pressures, couple of hurries. So very proud of that guy and his effort. Need him to continue that, especially on this first series. Kicking it off will be Tyler Davalos, the freshman, back deep to receive. Two guys to be named later. <laughs> Trey Stewart's one of them. And he's going to get it at the three-yard line. Almost slipped. 10, 15, 20, 25. Gets across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Brought down by a host of Wolves. Right there, uh, Xavier Robinson being one of them. And it will be first and 10 for the Saints. Yeah, so we'll see what... Uh, uh, it's actually T.J. Lockley. Okay. Because we will see what we do right here. We're coming out. Uh, we're going to match what they do. Noller back out looking to have a good second half, but we're going to come out in that 4 2 5. Seven to six. Wolves lead the Limestone Saints. Two receivers right, one left. H back to the right. Hand to Stewart. No, they're going to pass. Mm. RPO. Mm. Deep slant caught. And Drew Dixon makes the, uh, makes the catch and slides on down at the 47 yard line. And Let's take a look now at familiar territory. Limestone has three players, former players on the UW on the uh, roster that played at West Georgia: Jelani Baker, Brandon Anora, and Brandon Shelnut. We'll talk about them a little bit more in just a second. 14-20 to go in the third quarter. First and ten. Saints RPO again. Got a man open. Called across the 40 to the 38-yard line. Rocking and rolling on through are the. Saints and brought down by number 29, Trey Douglas. You mentioned it, RPO two plays in a row, and the thing that makes it really tough is linemen are downfield giving you a run look, and it gives uh, it gives those linebackers a really tough read. You've either got to come up and play the run or sit down and play the pass. Two to the right, one to the left, H back left for the Saints. Noli going to run or going to pass, and he's brought down on a Mike Blitz by Xavier Robinson. There it is. We over-pursued, and it worked to our favor right there, Coach. Yeah, we rolled the dice exact right time. They go play action, old school, traditional play action pass. We, we brought more than they could handle, produced a negative play. Not only is that going to slow them down, but they've got really two plays to pick up 15 yards or so right now. So right now, defense is on the plus side of things. Yeah, Eric Williams took – Pretty much two, three offensive linemen right there. Mike and Xavier Robinson came untouched. Trips right, one to the left. Ball at the 45-yard line. They'll throw it to the 40. It's complete to number 11, the big time in, tight end, Herman McRae, the fourth, but a gain of just three. If you're playing Madden, that's called Y stick right there. They go trips. <laughs> the tight end has an option route. He decided to sit down against man coverage. Fortunately, we are right there. Johnny on the spot, bringing up third and long. Third and 12. Probably two down territory, probably. 
Well, after the kick we saw by number four <laughs> on the extra point, I think you're probably right. And they're going to run a draw. That's a two-down territory call, and he's just running through, folks. Mm. Stiff arm, Stewart, 35-30. 26-yard line, going to be close to the first down, and he got it. Yeah, that is a tough break for us right there. We're in the backfield as the snap reaches the quarterback's hand. Unfortunately, our defensive player decides to go after the quarterback, and he did not have the football. And then a couple of missed tackles later, big play for Limestone, the old getting them close to the red zone. Halfback draw, got to the 26-yard line, had to get to the 27-and-a-half, and they got to the 26 Pistol look now, two tight left, two to the right. Takes the snap, gonna run it up the middle. Big hole again and gets up to the 21 yard line, maybe even the 20. They're coming downhill on us right now. Yep, straight give right there, old school dive, getting behind 6'8", 318 pounds worth of man <laughs> that is, Lionel Thomas. Brandon Robin, or Brian Robinson on the carry. As he's the backup listed. Going to pass, going to throw out to the big tight end, and Deontay Overstreet does a phenomenal job of holding on. He made the grab, but Xavier Robinson also comes up and makes the stop on the big tight end, McCray again. Could not have played that any better. Great call, had a little bit of a safety blitz to provide pressure, only one outlet, and he was covered. Uh, great play by the West Georgia defense right here. Another two big downs. Probably had two, two down territory still. Clock sits at 11. Here's the UWG Productions instant replay. Great job by Deontay Overstreet and Xavier Robinson. High snap. Going to keep it on the RPO. That's intentional grounding. Got to be intentional grounding. Who's in wow. the area? The only thing I can think of the big is maybe the was running the back was close enough. They win again. This is the, the most difficult play, I think, that they run. Well, it is the, the halfback counter slash RPO. We're just going to throw it anyway. Uh, maybe he gets it to the feet of the running back right yeah. there. It's the definition of intentionally grounding yeah. the ball. Yep. Gets but it to the running back. He, the running back was there, I guess. Tight right. McCray on the line of scrimmage. Fourth and five. Don't jump off sides. We got everybody at the line together. They got the oh. wheel route, and he's wide open. Stewart called it at the 10, and he's down inside the 10 to the six-yard line. Nobody had the, uh, had the back out of the backfield. Yeah, hats off to those guys. We had bought, brought pressure from that edge about two or three plays in a row. Brought the pressure again. Hits the back right over the top of it. They're going straight to it. High snap. Going to hand to Stewart left side. And Great we, play. With a huge hit, Michael Merriweather comes from his edge and makes a stop along with Jalen Tarver at the seven-yard line. 10-15 and counting. Saints on a drive. We got to hold him right here, Coach. Great play by 42, the senior Tarver right there. Gets a hand on him, beats his block, waits for the Calvary to come, creates a negative play. Second goal from, what, are we, around the 7-8? They're going to mark it on the 7. That's where it gets difficult for our old eyes. It is, it is. But you know what? This is actually not a terrible place for us to be. Shortens the field a little bit for those guys. Three receivers and a tight end. They'll hand to the running back, Robinson, up mm. the middle. We hit him at the line of scrimmage. He bounces off like a pinball at the five, the four, maybe the three-yard line for Brian Robinson. It's third and goal. Yep, we got to wrap up. We wrap up at the point of attack right there. We're looking at third goal from around the six or seven. Missed a tackle, able to run and pursue the football, but got a little bit closer. Gives them the opportunity to throw our pass right here on third down. And walking up, a little gimpy is Trey Douglas, one of our defensive backs. And they're going to have to reset the play clock. So seven to, seven to six, Wolves lead. Ball at the four-yard line, almost the three and a half. Four, still four down territory? I don't think so. You're Well, I mean, heck, I don't know. <laughs> Robinson in it running back. They'll fake it, going to run the RPO. Tipped up, incomplete. Great job, Deontay Overstreet. Well done. He is way oversized with McCray standing at six foot four. And Deontay Overstreet, what is he listed at? What do we have him listed at? 5'9", <laughs> 200 yeah. pounds, and great defense. Boxed him out like a basketball player. That's it. What do we have him listed at? Yeah. Because it looks like a greater height differential right there. A uh, different place kicker coming in, different place kicker now. He still, wears a, he still wears a single digit. Yeah, this is two. This was the kickoff guy, not the guy that missed the extra point. This The kicker is, well, Daniel Deneen. Kick is up, and he missed it right. 
He pushed what it right. What a stand. He pushed it right. Deneen is coming up hobbling too. I tell you what, you know what? You take just blow after blow after blow right there. You hunker down. You stiffen up inside the red zone. You force a field goal. They miss another kick inside, uh, you know, the 10-yard line right there. That will come back huge. And look at this uh, drone shot courtesy of the UWG's Department of Digital Experiences. Digital Experiences has taken the University of West Georgia to new heights in areas of production and technology. Led by director Corey Spates and production engineer Matt Cash, UWG can now connect and produce high-level broadcasts anywhere on campus from the master control room inside the Coliseum. This technology connects over the university's enterprise network, providing unlimited and cost-efficient flexibility. How about this look, Coach, at the drone cam? I'm going to tell you what right now. Next level type stuff. I remember being a little kid, and you're looking through fuzzy white snow, and now here we are, <laughs> you know, with a beautiful shot of the entire facility that we have, which is gorgeous here, by the way. Great facility. Uh, you, you can't beat it. It's Thursday night football. You see it right there? I Dr do. You see it there flying? Just, Just floating up there. Beautiful night for football here on August the 31st. September coming in just a couple more hours. And I know Kate Perry might have something to say about the great digital experience department here at the University of West Georgia, right? Well, I mean, Carly, that's what you do. I mean, I'm a social media ambassador, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what we do best. You know, President Brendan Kelly, one of his big things that he talks about over and over is experiential learning. Well, here we are on the sideline. Carly, she's getting that experience that she needs to take the West Georgia brand and her West Georgia degree to the next level. Kate, if you can interview Carly with your mic, that would be great. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> she was just agreeing with everything I and, said, and, you know. And you're facing the camera there to the right. <laughs> there he is. Carly, now they're looking at us. Do you agree with everything I just said? Yes, I do. That's right. Cade Perry, the greatest sideline reporter in history. Guys, you can only get that type of coverage right here, right now, Cade Perry. That's it. Carly, what's it been like following Cade around? I, I've always wondered what it's been like to follow Cade around, roaming on the sidelines. It's been fun, um, meeting a bunch of new people. Um, just an awesome experience overall. Awesome. God, well, you hear that, guys? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you've trained her well, I guess, Kate. I mean, you know, she hasn't gotten run over. I haven't gotten run over. We haven't gotten kicked in the back of the head by a cheerleader. Everything's doing good. <laughs> Let's play some football. Great job, Digital Experience team. Great work, Corey and, and Matt and Carrington, the whole crew back in the studio. Whitlock to pass and just overshot. Yep. Zay Britt, deep slant again. Just cannot – Having a hard time just finding finding it a little bit, Coach, with yeah. our receivers. You know, some guys say pulling the string, mechanics, whatever. But Coach Dean is doing a tremendous job. They're getting some one-on-one -on -one coverage, and we're probably going to get some more of that as the night goes on until Whitlock proves that he can hit a couple of those things because that was an open inside move by the receiver. as a slant. It was there. Just threw the thing a little bit high. So as the night progresses, if I'm limestone, I'm going to transition my defense into saying, all right, Mr. Whitlock, you're going to have to beat us. Are you surprised to see our first cramp of the year just now? You know, I'll be honest with you, I kind of am. It's, you know, it's 9 o'clock now, and, and, and the weather is, is – it's almost feel, it almost feels like fall. I would have anticipated that in the first half, but not now. Big fella right there, too, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Defensive lineman. Number one. Tykilo now, defensive Moore. lineman wears yeah. number one. That's how you know you're scared. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, 6'4", yeah, 300. <laughs> that is a large human being. Yeah. It's a big number one. <laughs> well, the single-digit kickers, though. Well, they've produced <laughs> zero digits on the scoreboard. <laughs> Two receivers bunched to each side, tight on the line of scrimmage. We have almost everybody within, I don't know, five yards of the football mm -hmm. on either side. Wesley Kennedy at running back. Whitlock, the pass. He never saw the Mike linebacker oh. coming on the blitz. That's number 12, Jacob Chandler. Cooley. Yep. Yep, there they, uh, there they go. They brought guys on us right there. And, and guys, we're going to continue to see that, I think, in the second half. Cover zero on the backside, man coverage, bring the heat at the young quarterback and make him read early pre-snap. And they were not hiding this one. Uh, yeah. This was not a zone blitz. They just came uh, and brought more than we had to block, and we just could, couldn't get the ball off. Brought five and 
great shift or by the D-line to take up some of those blockers. 8.30 to go, third in Rootville. Third 19 officially. Trips to the left, one to the right. Rogers Mosley in at running back. Bring Wesley Kennedy in motion, flag, and delay a game. Delay a game. And, Coach, I'm going to be honest with you there. We brought Kennedy in motion. Delay of game, offense, number nine. Five-yard penalty, still third down. They brought Kennedy in motion right there, and there was nothing that he could do about it. Yeah, again, part of that is, you know, getting that play in and, you know, a young quarterback sitting in a situation, tight football game, second half, got to be able to go out there and command these guys and get the, get the playoff. So now third and 24, almost third in Franklin. We're not moving in the right direction, not been our best offensive yeah. series. Trips to the right, one to the left, Kennedy beside Whitlock. Whitlock going to pass to LP. LaPerion caught it at the 20 and a hit stick. Oh, man, huge hit. Yep, big hit on their part. And listen, that play does not result in the first down, but it could loom large in this second half because that is the best that we have looked uh, as far as running our RPO game tonight. Good ball, put on the numbers. Uh, that, that's got to give you a little bit of confidence, even though you didn't convert on the third and forever. Well, third, or now fourth and eight, we were able to get about 20, we got, no, uh, about 17 14, yards, yeah. 16 yards. Numbers. Numbers, right? Great snap by Reagan. Mason to punt it away, and it's a high wobbly kick inside the 30. Great punt. Great punt by Riley Mason, who's flipped the field, and the ball is going to be on the 25. A well of a job there by Riley Mason. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. The second half is a lot like the first. Uh, it's kind of a stalemate early on. You know, Limestone came out swinging, got down inside the red zone. West Georgia stiffened up. Uh, West Georgia able to flip the field right here, put Limestone starting around their 25-yard line. And I like our chances. Our defense has been a little bit tonight, but the, they definitely have not break. Uh, D.C., Nate Masters done a pretty good job so far. 7-11 to go, third quarter. And don't have the, the punt yet of how long it was. I'm not the math guy here. Jeremy Smith gets mm. it, kicks outside to the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, uh, 45, 46 yard line. Man, what a run by Trey. Uh, that was Trey Stewart. Sorry. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Again, uh, we're in position to make plays, just not putting guys on the ground right now. And here they go, hustling on up. First and 10, chains not even set. Go to Stewart again. He'll crease it again. 50, 45 inside the 45 to the 42-yard line. First down for the Saints. And it was a 53-yard punt by Mason, by the way. Same play, other direction. It's zone left and then zone right. As you can see, the entire offensive line taking a quick zone step to the right. Running back puts his foot in the ground, gets north and south quickly. And that is a really a touchdown saving tackle by number 15, uh, Ben Fortson Bowden. No, you got it. The Wolves got to be a little tired here. They've been on the on the field a lot in this third quarter. They're going to run it again. This time there off the go. edge, Brian Rice, the senior D lineman, comes and makes a huge play behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. Brian Rice, senior out of uh, Cedar Town, or uh, yeah, is that Cedar Town? No, he's out of uh, Douglasville. Yeah, no, he's out, of, he's out of shorter. Sorry. Could, could not have happened at a better time. I don't care where he's from. Uh, where he got to was the backfield, and that's where we needed him. Nolensville, Tennessee. I wonder if Charles Jetmore knows who that I'm, is. I guarantee you he does. <laughs> Three receivers to the left, one to the right to pass. Deep oh, no. ball. He's open, caught at the 13-yard line and out of bounds inside the 10. That's by big number eight, Damon or uh, Mikey Jones. Yeah, and I'll it looked like our guy just kind of got, got lost. Got back lost, there. yeah. Uh, we've actually played really well in the back end all night long. Not a special play design right there. Just kind of got lost with our eye discipline. Uh, receiver able to sneak behind us. Fortunately, we made up, made a touchdown, saving tackle. Hopefully, uh, 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 not for nothing here. Yeah. Jeremy Smith, too tight in coverage. Too tight in look now to the right. They'll run it to Stewart up the middle, and we had him at the line of scrimmage, then lost him. Man, Stewart is so slippery. Amos Don was the first to hit him. 
he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. But, Coach, we had him three yards pinned in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, that's it. We've got to continue to start making tackles. You see number 35 right there on the replay, Trey Loveless out of Harrelson County High School, yeah. comes in to finish him off. But we've got to start making that initial hit and wrap and stopping those guys for no gain. Quick sugar huddle here. Busting out quick. Snap. Kept. He's going to take off and run, and he's going to be short. He's going to be short right at the one. He got wow. popped. He did tough play right there to defend. You get your quarterback out in space. They're going to go hustle up. Go ahead and get it, Matt. Right at the line of scrimmage. They're ready to go. Snap to Stewart. We mm. tackle him, Amos Don, at the three-yard line behind the line of scrimmage. Don't hit anybody. Great Don't play. back up, Carson. Don't you dare provoke him. What a great play right there. It's third. It's fourth down, Coach. Fourth down and goal from the three. Let's see what we get. They're going to bring a tight end out, put a wide receiver in. Great play right there. Anticipation on the snap. They went too fast for themselves right there. Good penetration. Great defensive stand. Let's do it one more time, West Georgia. Fourth and goal from the three-yard line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight left. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top. Coming in motion. It's Baker. They're going to keep it. Right side. He's no, short. No. He's not going to get there. You shall not pass. Deontay Overstreet and Amos Don. You want to talk about Ben but not break the second half. Limestone has come out, give every, every ounce of offensive scheme and specialization to West Georgia. Been inside the five-yard line twice, and West Georgia says, no, no soup for you. you. I mean, there is equipment flying right there. What a lick by zero. Deontay Overstreet bringing the heat, laying the wood, and now – if there's a negative, it's first down uh, inside of our own one. But what a tremendous effort by the West Georgia defense to keep them out of the end zone. Here it is again. Watch the yellow mouthpiece go flying. Pop go to Weasel. <laughs> Oof. Great defensive stand. Now let's get it out of the shadow of our own goal. Let's try to do it right here, Coach. Two to the right, one to the left. Snap. We've, we're throwing mm. it. We had a man open. LP was there, just overshot. Yep, uh, good pressure. Uh, Limestone got their ears pinned back right here. They're thinking safety for sure. They're trying to, you know, get some quick penetration right Ugh. there in the quarterback's face. Scary. Quickly. Very Scary. much so. Very much so. But we had a receiver in the area, got the ball off. We live the fight again. If LP catches that, he's got one man to yeah, beat. He has some space, there's no <laughs> he had doubt. plenty of space. Tremendous play call. It's just it's tough to hold that many guys out. Second and ten, two to the left, one to the right. H back left, snap, hands to Mosley. Mosley breaks it at the five, Mosley 10, Mosley mm. first down to the 13 yard line. Man, we needed that. There's a large exhale in the stadium after that. And, that's, for that's, this, and from this fat announcer. <laughs> for all of us. But that's what can happen when you got your ears pinned back and you're thinking safety and penetration, running back gets the ball. If he can make one guy miss, he's got a chance to take it the entire way. Two receivers each side. Rogers Mosley has been our best back tonight. He's right at over 50 yards now. We hand it to him again. Got maybe a yard. But we've continued to maintain possession of the football. I have to go back and look at our stats and see how we're doing on time of possession. But second half, you know, Limestone's moved the ball pretty quickly. Our defense had been on the field for a while just to be able to possess the ball, pick up a first down, uh, you know, big, big by the offense right here. Second and go, uh, second and nine. Second, seven to six. Snap. Whitlock looking across the middle. Complete, complete across the middle to Javen West. First down, West Georgia to the 37-yard line. Whether it was or not, that looked like a confident throw from Mr. Whitlock right there. Sat in the pocket. Limestone only brought four. Great protection up front. Found the soft spot in the zone. First down, Wolves. Let's see if we try to get Terrell Cole involved. We haven't gone to T. Cole tonight, but Javen West not going to complain about that reception up to the 38-yard line, first and 10. Great job on the UWG Productions instant replay. 1.30 to go, and we're going to have a false start. Well, let's see what the call is right there. I think they might have made us move, but, you know, it is against us in the, in the long run. Well, David White forgot to turn his mic on. It's all right. We got him. It is false start uh, on your West Georgia Wolves. Did get a jump from the D tackle right there. 
My goodness. I can't get over that stop by the defense. Damn, that's huge. his third big stop of the night. Would like to say that's the biggest stop of the season so far. <laughs> I see what you did there. 118 to go, third quarter. Two receivers left, one to the right, H back left. Will fake it to Mosley, going to go one-on-one. -on -one. There's T. Cole, called it 45-40 into the 35-yard line. T. Cole, the our all-conference receiver. You couldn't hold him down for long. Man, did not get the opportunity to get this out before the play, but I watched Limestone come up and run press coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, man coverage to the bottom side, and they paid for it. And look, Whitlock, Whitlock just says, go get it, too. Great throw right there. Great catch over the shoulder. Only your wide receiver can catch it. Good placement on the ball right there, Mr. Whitlock. Trips left, tight right is Eshawn Mays. Mosley beside Whitlock. Snap. Hands to Mosley. He creased it. 25 across the 25 to the 23-yard line near another first down. Best the offense has looked since early in the game on that 96-yard touchdown drive. They are moving the ball confidently. Play calling is good. Offensive line is playing well. West Georgia looking like they're coming out of this drive with some points, Matt. How about the nine? How about a 99-yard drive? We'll guys? take it. 96, 10 seconds. 99. Let's see if we get one more playoff. Looks like we are going to. Two receivers each side. Will fake it. Going to throw to T. Cole. 20. T. Cole puts his head down at the 18. Ball is out. Ball is out. They're going to say he's down and the clock's yep. running. I'm afraid we fumbled that football, Coach. But luckily, they don't have any challenges. That's and it. it's a first down for West Georgia. That's it. We ought to go to the fourth quarter with the football inside the red zone. Athletic play. We'll be back here on UWG Productions. Fourth quarter next, 7-6. Wolves lead. Fourth quarter action, Wolves with a 7-6 lead over the Limestone Saints on a big drive right now. Have gone about 70, or 69 yards so far. Hand to Mosley, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage and pushed back about two yards. Good pursuit by the defense. Yeah, the run Saints. blitz. Run blitz right there by Limestone. Good guess on their part. Both defensive coordinators had a couple of good guesses tonight, but there's an injured Saint on the field. Maybe another cramp. Yep. 
Big yep. boy. Man, they've got a bunch of them, too. He is a large human being. Large human being. But that will bring us to a little bit of a timeout right here with 14.44 left in the game, Matt. Uh, what are you thinking right here? Second down, and I guess it's going to be about 14 after that TFL. Well, listen, we finally started to go to T. Cole. Yeah. I mean, we finally started to get him more involved, which is always big. What I can do is take a look at some scores from around Division Two because a lot of teams are playing. Uh, Charleston Southern actually just took the lead on North Greenville, 13 to 10. Charleston Southern's an FCS school, if you didn't know. There you uh, go. And they are only up by three on North Greenville. Mississippi College is up on Kaiser, an NAI school, 17 to 14. Uh, let's see some other games. I'm trying to find some some teams that we, we need to worry about. Uh, let's see, Kennesaw and Tusculum haven't kicked off or haven't kicked off. Delta State's up thirty one to six on Missouri S and T. Uh, let's see here. Harding leads Southern Nazarene thirty five to nothing. That's a halftime score. Angelo State and West Alabama. Wow, Angelo State ranks sixth in the country. According to D2 Football, and West Alabama has the lead on them 14-10, to 10, Coach. Wow, big upset if, if it can hold. Yeah. Injured uh, Saint, again, number one, though, the big D lineman. Will toss it to a receiver, mm. and it goes nowhere. Loses it about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Trying to quick toss to uh, Kenyante Skinner. No yeah. relation. No relation. You know? Yeah, no, no relation. relation. Well, it's going to bring up third down and long right here, and honestly – uh, the difference in the game can be the kicking game. Right here, uh, if you set yourself up for a manageable field goal, you know, you go up by four points, or a field goal can't, for Limestone cannot win the game. Yeah, Brock Pellegrino can make it from, I'd say, 50 and in is his range. We're in that range right now. Whitlock to pass, steps up, throws, got a man open. Terrell Cole at the 10. T. Cole, five, inside the five, down to the three. I'm not sure how that happens, but one of the best players in the conference gets wide open in the red zone on a big play. We will take it. Great job, again, by number nine, sitting in the pocket, delivering the ball. Uh, Cole finds a spot in an open zone coverage right there and uh, results uh, first down. The safety was trying to get over there, but he slipped. Yeah, well, the safety uh, lost his footing, and thankfully he did. Got to be an athlete. Number 14, Dadrian Lyman made the stop. That's going to be first and goal inside the five. Let's punch it in, baby. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Rajez Mosley will hand it off to him. Mm. And does he get in? He does. Boom. Touchdown, Wolves. Rajez Mosley converts. And the Wolves lead 13-6. to six. Man, what a great job staying on your feet in the offensive line. Now, that's one thing that has changed in college football in the last couple of years. Your guy gets kind of stood up a little bit. The big uglies can get behind him and keep moving him forward, forward progress. Again, almost stood up on the on the uh, one right there. That's not even a big guy. That was number one pushing him in the end zone. Pellegrino will kick it. Reagan will snap it. Hogan will hold it. Snap good, hold good, kick looks good because it is good. Pellegrino just got destroyed too. Yeah, that's going to cost them on the kickoff right there too. Well, we're going to take a time. Oh, oh they didn't even call that. I saw a flag. Yeah, but I think it's going to be offsides and not uh, roughing the kicker. Let's see what it is. Offsides, it's going to be declined, so we'll take our media timeout 14 to 6. West Georgia the lead over the Limestone Saints. Let's get one more stop on defense when we come back here on UWG Productions. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I wanna be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. 
I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. A huge drive, 11 plays and 99 yards, as you see Coach David Dean giving a big old hug to Ben Whitlock. How about it? How about it? Yeah, I'm being honest with you. Uh, that what that is an, a 99-yard drive, 11 Ends plays, up, yep. six points, and you know Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy said these new clock rules are going to eliminate about four possessions a game. Wow. Well, end over end kick. Pellegrino drives it back to the four yard line. Blocking They've back. creased it. Let's see, we're there gonna have a flag and it's coming back, but he's up to midfield, 45, across the 45 to the 40, but it was clear to me that Eli Barrow, the freshman linebacker, got blocked in the back. Yeah, it was an easy call right there. I was hoping they weren't gonna miss it. I saw it as soon as it happened. Uh, it just, it all three, there were three officials that saw it. There's three flags on the play. Uh, so it will be called, and they'll start somewhere around the, you know, 17, 18, 20-yard line. But I bring up the, the hey, possessions. Look at that. Guys, <laughs> look at that replay. Let's give a shout-out to Brock Pellegrino, the <laughs> kicker, for laying the hammer. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Brock Pellegrino, the kicker. Wearing a, oh. uh, wearing a good kicker number. Let's see what the ref has to say. Blocking the back. There were more than one. There was two blocks in the back. All right. So we missed one. So you obviously you set the one that gives them the worst penalty. But, you know, our kicker wearing a kicker number, able to make the tackle. But I bring that up about the possessions because now West Georgia up by eight points. If they can get a stop right here, it really is going to put some uh, pressure on Limestone uh, to get a quick stop so that they have some manageable time of possession left to try and tie the game up. So they went from starting at the 40-yard line in, in West Georgia ter uh, territory, Coach, they're going to get it marked off from the five wow. and go back all the way to the seven and a half yard line. Yeah, I must have missed that block in the back. I saw one block in the back, but I missed this one. I Either that way, was at like the twenty at least. We will take it. First and ten for the Limestone Saints. Trip to the left, tight right, running back to the right, and that's Dustin Noller. Fakes it, looking. Noller getting chased, going to take off and run, and he'll slide now. After a gain of about three. Yeah, great coverage on the back end. West Georgia drops into a three deep zone right there. Linebackers are in hook zone. Absolutely nothing going right there. No fly zone. Jabron Claude in coverage as well. Second and six. Ball on the 12 yard line. 12-22. Hands to Stewart. We miss a tackle. Keandre Williams then makes the stop. Problem is it was downfield to the 18-yard line and maybe even the 19. They're going to say first down, Coach. Yeah, things that will be addressed, I can promise you. We've had a few missed tackles tonight. Without without those defensively, we have played pretty doggone but, well. But credit, I mean, Trey Stewart, he's 5'10", 200 pounds. He, he runs like it. Yes. I mean, yeah. he's huge. Shifty little move in the hole right there. Was one-on-one -on -one with a wolf, and, and he won the matchup. 14 to six, first and 10, high snap, looking, threw it low. 
Yep, really, his complete. first tough pass of the night. Dustin Noller's been pretty sharp for the most part. And honestly, I, you know, that may have been the place to put the ball. Pretty good coverage right there. I can't tell who that is, number 26 or 28. Got to get some eyes up here. But uh, good coverage. I think if he puts that ball in the air, we've got a shot to, to maybe t turn that into a pick six. I believe that's Merriweather, Coach, 29. 29. Or no, that's uh, Trey Douglas. I'm sorry. And coverage. Yeah, he's just he is 17 to 22 tonight. He's looked sharp. High snap again. Ball's Ball loose. Mm. They, I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating, folks. He has had a the center tonight. Charles Crouch has had a lot of high snaps. Yeah, not his best work on the evening, fortunately for us. But wow, here we go. They had just driven the ball all the way down to our one. Now it's going to be third down and long. Third and 16. Get a stop here. Rally again. Third and long. Let's see what they've got drawn up here. We got our pass rush guys in there with Huntley and Keandre Williams. Here they come. Noli looking, has to dump it off, and we're right there at the 20, and they break down and cannot make the stop across the 30 to the 34-yard line, 35-yard line, first down. We had two guys there at about the 24 to make the tackle, but credit Stewart, he made a man miss, made two people miss, and got a first down. Yeah, again, super frustrating. Uh, Coach Masters with the perfect call, just one that was unable to execute. And we got a flag, and they tried to go way too quick and a false start. And he's lucky it was a false start. I don't know why the quarterback's complaining, because he was about to get lit up by Mason Huntley. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, you've got mass substitutions coming in for West Georgia right now as well. But, yeah, that previous play, third and forever, called some zone defense on the back end. Nobody open. Receive, our quarterback checks down to the uh, outlet receiver. We have two or three West Georgia Wolves in position to make a play, just unable to bring him down. Number 75 from Limestone is this right tackle. I'm trying to get – he is 6'4", 335 pounds. No, he is not. No, he's not. I'm going to go 350. Yeah. 10, 25 and counting. Going to hand it off up the middle. They crease it again. Xavier Robinson makes the stop, but it was seven yards down the field at the 38-yard line. That was Brian Robinson again. Yep, and they're going to stay on the football, not allow West Georgia to substitute at all. Uh, checking with the sideline. They know this is a drive they're going to have to convert on with 10 minutes left in the football game. Uh, don't know how many more possessions they'll get. Stewart just went over the 100-yard mark, and Robinson now with 16 yards on four carries. Second and about seven now after an eight-yard gain. Snap, Noli looking. Completes it right at the sticks. And we may throw him down a yard short, depending on the spot. Now they're going to give it to him after the Kamai and Fagans tackle. They get it off to number eight, Mikey Jones, who caught the touchdown pass for the Saints. First down, limestone. Yep, very methodical drive. West Georgia, again, rotating their entire defensive line. Uh, part of that, I believe, is to work on the stamina of the limestone offensive line. But I'm telling you, when they go to a buffet, the manager trembles. <laughs> Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and a tight end to the left. Snap to the right side. He's going to have to take off and that's run, gotta and that's got to be grounding. That's got to be grounding. Nobody's in the vicinity, and I mean nobody's in the vicinity. We've got coaches on the field upset about it. He, he was, was not out of the tackle box. No, he was not. Wow, it's a tough no call right there. Great uh, Coach Masters again dialing up pressures uh, right there. Perfect call, perfect time. Really should have came up with a negative play, but there's a no call there. Maybe I'm missing a receiver, Matt. Well, let's see. Mm. I mean, if there's one within 15 yards, then yes. <laughs> but he did not get out of the tackle box. Mm -hmm. He did get it past the line of scrimmage, though. High snap again, and we go for the quarterback. Ooh. We kill the quarterback. We had three guys hit the quarterback. Nobody hit the running back. He got seven yards across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Yeah, fortunately for them, that was not an RPO, or if it was, he made the correct read because he did get leveled. Number 40, 45 come in and absolutely laid the DeAndre hammer Williams. DeAndre Williams, who's been all over the field tonight. But it is third down. Third down and three, 827, 826, counting here in the fourth quarter. Noller at quarterback trying to will his Saints for a first down right here on third down. Two to the right, one to the left. Snap, Noller looking right at the sticks again. First down, 
Gets it off to Doug Washington, or to, uh, yeah, Doug Washington, the senior wideout. Yeah, West Georgia kind of content to make them earn it, play a little bit of zone coverage on this drive on the backside. Noller has found some open men, but again, they're just kind of inching forward. Uh, you know, West Georgia playing a little more bend, but don't break. Yeah, that's exactly right. Bend, but don't break. Snap, Noller, the crossing routes across the middle, mesh, they call that a mesh point, mm -hmm, right? That's across it. the 40 to the 38 yard line. And that's Washington again on the reception. And luckily he went to the right crosser and not the left crosser because the left crosser might still be running. Yeah, a little more space on the wide side of the field. Again, 45, Keandre Williams in on the stop. Three down linemen, a lot of hands on hips in the first game. It's, it's almost September. Football is here. Fakes the handoff, play action pass. Mm. And Mason Huntley hits the quarterback. Noli took a huge hit. He's taking a lot of hits tonight, but he got right back up. Yep. Good job by the quarterback, though, to get it off to his running back. Uh, just not intentional grounding there. Yeah, great pressure again by West Georgia. Quarterback's done this two or three times tonight. Under pressure, throwing it at the feet of his running back to not give up the sack or the intentional grounding. Another big third down for West Georgia. Third and four, ball on the 38-yard line. They got to get to the 34. So third and four. Trips to the left, tight right. Oh, left tackle moved. Left tackle moved, yeah. They're going to get the call, yep, false start. He's yelling, snap it. I've been sitting in my stance for too long. <laughs> when you are... Six, seven, 325 pounds. I'd want him to snap it too. 325 <laughs> was, was at the end of a season. That was prior to the summertime buffets. Uh, that is a very light. That's, that's, that's nice. It's a nice listed weight right there. Well, they got a timeout on the field, and it looks like I see Kevin Hemphill, so that means it's time for a media timeout. Our final media of the night. 7.19 to go here in quarter number four. Wolves lead 14 to six. A huge third and nine coming up next on UWG Productions. financial advisor can do for you. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. play of the ball game thus far. Trips to the left, one to the right. Saints driving inside the 45 at the 43-yard line of West Georgia. 7-19 on the fourth quarter clock, and we jump off sides. Noli to pass, mm. and it's complete right at the sticks for a first down. Yeah, had a free play to work with right there. Kind of seems like we stopped working with it, and they're able not just to get the offsides call up, but pick up the first down as well. The senior, Drew Dixon, 6'4", 200-pounder out of Tucson, Arizona. 
And it is offsides on us. Offside. And it'll be first down decline. So ball crosses the 35 to the 33 yard line. Hunker down one more time, Wolves. Well, I mean, one more spot, time. It's the spot where we start playing really well inside the red zone. We're not quite there yet. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight left, big McCray. Pressure. Coming on a blitz. We miss it and they drop it. And there's a flag. It's either holding or roughing, one or the other. Big 73. Yeah, they've moved that closer to the line of scrimmage in the area of holding. Holding on number 73. Needed that, brought pressure right there. A little bit of a delay blitz. Quarterback went to the right spot with the ball. You throw the ball where the blitz came from. Uh, unable to come up with the catch. So there was not going to be any harm our way either way. But one of the big offensive linemen up front couldn't hold his water. And Xavier Robinson came in like he was shot out of a cannon in 73. Just had to hold on for dear life. 6.51 to go, fourth quarter, 14 to six, your score. We're bringing a Mike Blitz again. Here comes Xavier Robinson. Nolly will have to step up and run. He's got all the room in the world. 30, 25, 20, runs out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Very nicely done by Dustin Noller, uh, Noller, the quarterback. Again, it's just the little things, missing little things, bring pressure. We get to the backfield, we make it home. We're unable to bring him down, and he runs where the pressure came from. Uh, nobody there finds the hole in the defense and sets him up again inside the red zone. Trey Loveless and number 15, Ben Fortson, bring him down. Noller to pass across the mm. middle, got a man wide open, and he caught it. After bobbling it a couple of times, touchdown. There is a flag on the play, and I think Noller got hit late, but it is a touchdown for Limestone. It is. Uh, obviously, we hope everybody's okay. We've got a flag pending right here. Um, oh, man. Noller is down, though. Yeah, he found a spot right over the middle right there. Great. Uh, it looked like a little bit of P44 via Mark Richt uh, in Tennessee, a little bit of a hobnail boot call. Almost. Herman McCray, McCray the fourth, the tight end, made the touchdown catch. But what we are concerned with now is Dustin Noller, who took a shot. And the coach from Limestone, not very happy currently. Yeah. Yep, uh, getting some information that uh, a little bit of a low shot on the quarterback right there, which would be why he is still down. Uh, obviously, we hope he's okay. He's played a tremendous game. Yes, he has. Limestone but tonight. he's taken a lot of hits tonight yes. already. And, you know, that's that's – that's a credit to West Georgia. This is a contact sport. It's not just a contact. It's a gladiator sport. It's a collision sport. Uh, and Coach is still really upset. Personal giving the business to roughing the passer on the defense number 90. The result Coach of the play is a touchdown. Limestone is elected to take the penalty on the try. Okay. Yeah. You know, we know the two-point try is coming. It's 14 to 12 when they fix uh, – when they update the score there, it'll be 14 to 12. So, Big two-point conversion coming. They've elected to take it on the try, which really gives them that run-pass option. Question is, who's going to be the quarterback? Backup quarterback number 10 now in the game uh, for Limestone. I'll get you a name here in just a second. Cal Endicott, 6'6", 230-pound grad transfer. What well, a drive by Limestone, though, to answer the Saints. 15 plays, Coach. And wow. they only went, went the 49 yards. Wow. Yeah, didn't have a long way to go. Um, but, they, again, if Coach they Fury, what not they happy. Did, no, super upset. His quarterback's taking a lot of shots. None of them have been in a roughing the passer manner except that last one we saw. And now they're having to bow their necks one more time. Here, as they take the, uh, the penalty inside the three, they put it on the two-yard line with 6.10 left to go. Heavy right. Saints have lined up under center, I formation. Stewart is the running back. First time under center tonight. McCrary comes in motion. They'll hand to Stewart, right side. No. He didn't get no. it! He didn't no. get it! He's short! He stopped! Merriweather makes the stop. That was man versus man football. They come in, tight ends everywhere, fullback in the game. 
They bring the tight end in motion. They let you know they're running the football. West Georgia had to man up against a big offensive line. They did so. Those guys oh, stuck yeah. their nose in Eric there. Eric Williams. Eric Williams making plays. You got a guy trying to lat drop a guy on the – I mean, that was a hold out of nobody's well, business right there. Eric Williams got the initial penetration. Michael Michael uh, Merriweather is going to get credit for that tackle. But if it's not for Eric Williams splitting the double team right there and pushing it back, Coach, they might have got in. That's it, man. That is football being selfless, allowing your brother to make a play by taking on blockers. That's what he did right there. And that's why West Georgia still leads this football game by two points. Daniel Deneen to kick it off. Let's see if we can get a good kick return. We need one. Love to have one in play right here. 14 to 12. 6-10 to go fourth quarter. Can we run one? Can we have a five-minute drive that ends in a touchdown? That'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. Let's put this one to bed right here. There you see Merriweather making the play of the game so far. Him and Eric Williams on that two-point conversion stop. Still waiting for Deneen to kick it. <laughs> end over end, it's going to be returned by Leperion Perry at the six. LP at the six. Can he get a block? No. It gets across the 20 to the 23-yard line, and that's where we'll set up shop. We need to go 77 yards in about five minutes right here, Coach. Yeah, obviously, uh, I don't believe Limestone will be it be lining up for a field goal to win it. They've shown a <laughs> lack of confidence in that game. So any points right here are uh, going to force uh, Limestone to obviously go for a touchdown. And the way West Georgia's defense has played inside the red zone, not knowing what the quarterback situation is going to be with Limestone coming back out, the offense has an opportunity in the ball game right now. And that's what you tell your guys in the huddle. I guarantee you that's what Coach Dean just told the guys. You got an opportunity to go put this one to bed. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. That's Trey Williams in the slot up there. Also for us, Cam Saunders in the ball game. LP, no T. Cole. Looks like we're going to fake it with Whitlock. Whitlock's going to pass. Got a man open. Trey Williams caught mm. it. Williams caught it at the 30, now the 31-yard line. And we got, we got a lot of extracurricular activities. These two teams have been very, very physical. Yeah, right there, Williams comes from the other side slot. What we got? Ooh, wow. Ineligible receiver downfield. Yep. yep, didn't even see the hanky on that one. It's hanging out at the, it was it just picked up on their side. So okay. a seven yard completion to Trey Williams is negated. Coming out, throwing it. I like the aggression. Yeah, as you can see on the replay right here, he actually comes across from the slot and comes behind the line of scrimmage first, almost like a shovel pass route. Uh, but great catch on his part. All for naught. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Wesley Kennedy in at running back. Snap. We'll give to Kennedy. Cut back. 20, 25. Kennedy, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Kennedy, 30, 20, 15. Wesley Kennedy. Holla at your boy. 82 yards. Touchdown, West Georgia. That's how you put it to bed right there. I know there's a lot of time left on the clock, but that young man, great blocking by the offensive line, just ran zone to the left, put his foot in the ground, broke the tackle, refused to go down, and takes it the distance. Hey, instead of five minutes off the clock, Coach, how about a, a, just about 30 seconds 30 off the clock? 30 seconds off the clock. It's time to run the hurry up. And no, going back to the replay right here, great zone blocking, getting to the second level the offensive line did. That allows your running back just to make one man miss. That's what he did. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know a lot of football players in this conference that are going to catch that young man in a foot race with the football. Well, we don't have the up man back on the PAT again. Wesley Kennedy to the house. He's holding on to that football. An all important extra point right here. High snap handle, Pellegrino kick is up. It looks good because it is good. 21 to 12, West Georgia leads. And that's it, big extra point like you said right there, Matt, makes it a two possession game up by nine points. Now pressure uh, hugely sits squarely on the shoulders of the Limestone Saints. We'll see if their quarterback makes it back into the game or not. 
What a run by Wesley Kennedy. Spinorama. And then he turned on the Jets to the house. It's the B button, by the way. It's the B <laughs> or button. Or the circle if you play PlayStation. Circle, depending <laughs> on your console of choice. But look at his teammate, Rajez Mosley, who was running the whole way with him. And they ran into Cade Perry almost. Or did they run into Cade Perry? And let's find out. I, I don't know. They were moving so fast. I, could, I, I, I didn't know what to do, guys. I know you're very anxious down there. So I, when, I mean, <laughs> they were moving really fast. Cade was like Ricky Bobby his first time post-accident. Oh, my gosh. Are those the other cars? The other guy that was moving really fast was the referee. You have to watch out for those guys. They will hit you in the blind side. Ugh. It's always your fault. Well, 21 to 12, Cade. Looks like the atmosphere has picked up a little bit down there. <laughs> Absolutely, but remember last season, one one thing that West Georgia Wolves had trouble with last season is when momentum would swing their way, they always had trouble holding on to it. So let's hope that this season goes better uh, when it comes to keeping the momentum. All righty. Well, we're going to kick it off with Brock Pellegrino. Great work. Look at our dance team. Dance team getting into it. Dance team is on it. The cheerleaders were on it. The fans in the stands are on it. Uh, you know, it's you talk about breathing a sigh of relief. Now you get to have a little bit of fun. Your players are going to be a little more, a little more loose. Uh, we just hope, like Kate said, we go ahead and finish the drill and keep the momentum on our side. Before the production crew says it, no, I'm not dancing with the dance team. <laughs> uh, give it time. Give it time. Give it time. We got a lot of football to be played. You will be held up by a cheerleader before the end of this year. Taken at the one. Out to the left side, 20, mm -mm. 25, 30. Here comes Javen West, a huge hit. Way to go, Javen West, out of nowhere. Really Jelani could have been Baker a with a good return. Touchdown saving tackle almost right there. Him coming across the field uh, needed that. Great blocking by Limestone right there. They got hit with two blocks in the back on the previous kickoff return. Looked like there could have been some laundry there. None was thrown, and they're, they're going to start with really good field position. Let's see who's in there at quarterback. It's the backup. It's the backup. Number 10. I, I hate that, man. Cal Endicott. I hate that, but we'll see Cal Endicott, the 6'6", 230 graduate. Looks like Peyton Manning. Large quarterback. Two receivers to each side. They'll fake to Stewart. Endicott going to throw. He's going to take off and run. No, and now he's going to throw again. Intercepted Merriweather. Michael Merriweather picked it. Merriweather, the interception ball at the 39. First down, West Georgia. Waiting on the call. We got it. Yeah. That's it. First down, Wolves. Man, what a situation to have to step into for Mr. Endicott. He steps up. <laughs> probably should have ran the football right there, decided to throw it at the last second, and threw it to one of the good guys. How about Michael Merriweather? He makes the stop on the two-point conversion. He stays in coverage, and he makes the interception. He's going to probably be your defensive player of the game. Might be the player of the game. He has come up huge, kept some points off the board for us tonight. Oh, he called it too. And, and, and basically ended this contest right here, up two possessions. I know there's five minutes and 11 seconds left. But again, you talk about Kate handling the pressure, handling momentum. So far, we're two for two since he's mentioned it. Yes, yes indeed. Great work, great job by the productions team to get that interception. He clearly called it. Two receivers to each side. Rajez Mosley in there at running back. We'll feed him left side across the 40 to the 41. We'll probably see a lot of Rajez on this possession, five minutes and three seconds, and we'll see if Coach Fury decides to whether or not to use the timeout or not. Yeah, probably going to take another first down for him to start using those timeouts, but West Georgia going to be content. Get that clock moving right here. Kennedy, 132 yards on the seven carries thanks to the 82-yard scuffle. But, man, we saw what he could do. He's elusive, ain't he? Man, he's got some speed to him. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. But now here's the bruiser in. Snap, hands to Mosley, mm. up the middle. He just couldn't scrape it. Across the 41 to the 40. Yeah, Excuse great, me, 42. Great play by number 15 right there. Matt Willwall, I believe is how you pronounce that. Just able to grab a shoestring, really. That's the difference, because otherwise, I think he's going to push that pile forward a little bit. Brings up third down, though. Third and seven. Ball on the 42-yard line. Mosley. <laughs> Looks like he's getting ready to do, do leg day. <laughs> <laughs> we are just chilling in the backfield. 10 seconds on the play clock. Under four minutes on the game clock. Two receivers to the right. 
too tight left. Whitlock to pass. Ben got a man open. Floats it down the field to the tight end and incomplete. Oh my goodness, no could have been a flag there. No P.I. We had Trey Williams and we had uh, who was it? Eshawn Mays running down the sideline. Put the right amount of touch on that football. Steps up into the pocket. You know, you, that, that, to me, that's going to speak volumes to this young man that your coaching staff has the confidence late in the game on third down to let you turn one loose and you run a couple of verts on one side. Had a man open. Good no call. Pushed it a little to the sideline. Yeah, good no call looking at it on the replay. Pushed it a little bit to the sidelines right there, but I know that your coaching staff has the confidence to go to you in that situation. Uh, it's going to prove big for him down the road. Reagan to snap it. Mason, the punter, a little to the left, but Riley Mason handles it and delivers another one. Hits at the 22, and it's picked up nicely there by number 14, Jake Davis, former quarterback, now wide receiver for the Wolves. Okay, any way to get on the field, those are the type of guys you want on your team. Coach, just yeah. let me know where I can get into play. Hustling down right there to make a to down a punt at the not, 25. Not inside the 20. Punting teams have looked good tonight so far, though. But that one does, not quite inside the 20. Took a bad bounce for us. All right, we'll see Endicott again. Still a two possession game. Three and a half minutes left. They are going to turn it loose right here. West Georgia will play some zone on the backside, no doubt about it. Let's see though if we decide to heat him up. Two receivers right. Tight left. Here comes a man semi towards the line of scrimmage in motion. Indicott going to pass, going to step up, going to fire. He's got a man open 30, 35, 40. We'll look at the speed of this guy. 40, 35, made a man miss, and then finally tackled out of bounds by Jeremy Smith. And that young man right there. Stewart, got Trey some Stewart. Speed on him. You know, just kind of a perfect storm right there. West Georgia goes zone. There's a crosser that our guy goes with that leaves the outlet wide open out there, and he made us pay. My goodness, I was not expecting that after Trace Stewart, a huge uh, completion. Here comes Endicott looking, Endicott looking, and he'll throw it out of bounds. He's a big kid. Yeah, he is. Oh, you know, my he's, God. He's going about eight yards per stride right there. Six foot six, long quarterback right there. Could have been maybe an interior His hole. mannerisms remind me of a Manning. <laughs> hey, Manning, we, we, we don't want him to be, well, I, I'm just going to move on. Uh, <laughs> just going to move on. Uh, edit, edit. There we go. <laughs> Keep bringing pressure, I think, right here. He's, he has not looked good in pressure. Yeah. Well, we got three down linemen. Andre Williams going to come off the outside. If we bring Great. it, Endicott takes a huge hit. It's incomplete. They had a man open, but he took a huge hit by number 90, Demetrius Lofton. I'm going to be honest with you. That was one of the best hand fight moves I have seen from the defensive line position tonight. Beat his man one-on-one -on -one immediately and allowed, to, allowed himself to put some pressure and take a shot on the quarterback. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Stewart in it, uh, running back beside Endicott. They go tight right. We're in our regular 4-2-5 look. Keandre Williams standing up on the outside. Third and 10, they got to get to the 18. Bring a Mike Blitz. Endicott the pass, complete to the 23. Across the 20, and it's going to be fourth down right at the 20-yard line. They need two yards. Yep, just a quick out right, right there. West Georgia sitting back in some zone. Great job coming up and making the tackle for no extra yardage. Doug Washington on the reception, and it's fourth down and two yards. Trips to the left, one uh, tight right. Running back is Smith. Play the game possibly right here. Ball at the 20. Endicott, the pass. Dumps it off to Stewart. He's at the 20. He's at the... 15 and he's tackled out of bounds by Xavier Robinson. Stewart gets up. Nice job by Endicott. Yep, just let the pressure pass the running back and then dumped it right off to him in some space, knowing that you only needed two yards right there. You, you stopped the clock momentarily with the first down inside of two minutes. Uh, you know, good play call. Mason Hundley coming out of the ball game now. 143, 142 and counting. Two receivers to the left. Tight end left. Endicott going to roll and looking. He almost crossed the line of scrimmage. I thought he did. I thought he might have, but it's a touchdown. Did he catch it? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. It was indeed caught by number four, Jelani Baker, the former Wolf, makes the grab. And it's now 21 to 18. 
Hopefully we can get a re replay right here. It looked like he was across the line of scrimmage. And David Dean's going to throw the challenge flag. You've got yeah. to. You might as well throw the <laughs> challenge flag because, I mean, what do you have to lose at this point, right? Yeah. Well, here's I mean, the here's the replay. Yeah. Well, we're going to get it from an from end here. zone shot. But I think he was over the line of scrimmage. I know he pressed. If he wasn't over the line of scrimmage, I'm telling Oof. you, we're talking about inches right here. Uh, and listen, you've got a challenge. There's a minute and a half left in the game. Anyway, you don't need your timeouts. You use the challenge right here no matter what. Hey, again, yeah. Coach Sadeski asking or thanking us, but I guess in college you can still throw the coach's challenge under two yeah. minutes because yeah. it used to be all boot under two minutes, only Just a booth, booth review. review. But So they're going to go and take a look underneath the tent. All right, we got, got a shot. Here we go. View. Here we go. Here's the sideline view. Line of scrimmage. I don't really know if you'll be able to tell from this angle, too. The original line of scrimmage was at the... Oh, man, he's right on the 15. He is right on it. It's going to be close. It's going to be, a, it's going to be an official decision right here. It's close enough to challenge. There's no doubt about it. Four. Yeah, it's yeah. Too, clo too close to call. Maybe too close to too overturn. Clo too close to overturn. But either way, it's the right thing to do to challenge this play right here. You have nothing to lose. He either gets a touchdown or he doesn't. It's, yeah. the, it's the right call by Coach David Dean. Uh, and it also gives your defense time to prepare yeah. uh, as well to make sure your hands team is ready. Got to. You know, because the extra point's coming right here. I'm kicking the extra point if I'm line stone to be down by two. Here's another shot right here. Again, line of scrimmage is right at the 15. And Endicott runs. His right toe is definitely on the 15 when he releases the football. Um, maybe the football was still in his hand as it crossed the 15. Uh, I would be surprised to see this overturned, to be honest with you, because it is so close. Well, got to give a little credit to Endicott and Limestone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean they, you, your number gets called right there at the end of the game. You haven't played all game. Your best player goes down with an injury, and you've got to come in and make a play. I wish I knew what the original line of scrimmage was. I do like the fact that they're still looking at it, though. The longer it takes, I like it. Thank you for your attendance. 21-18, we're still looking. It's going to be close. They're writing stuff down. That's usually a good sign, right? We'll find out. It could just be the, what time the challenge was called, and they have to keep notes about every time out. But we're about to – the white hat is coming to Coach David Dean before he does anything. So Coach Dean's asking. Uh-oh. Let's see what we get. I don't think – I think it's still going to be a touchdown. Uh, yeah, that's what it's, the body language says. On the field stand. He said it stands. That's what I heard. Yeah. I heard it stands. And, yes, <laughs> it looks like limestone is going. Uh, they're attempting to kick the extra point. But at any rate, um, at any rate, you had time to talk to your hands team, your special teams, because that's what's coming with a minute and 32 seconds left. There will be an onside side kick. Daniel Deneen, though, very important extra point. Yep. Again, I don't know that Limestone's field goal unit is good enough to win it with a field goal. Um, but maybe an extra point here. We'll find out. I'll be honest, I might fake it if I was those guys. <laughs> 132 to go, fourth quarter. 21 to 18, snap, good kick. That one was beautiful. Yeah, it's the best kick they've had. My goodness, that went up on top of the AOB. And the kicker motioning to the West Georgia sideline. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> bold strategy, got Weird flex, but let's see how it pays off for him. Minute and a half left. Obviously, onside kicks coming, Matt. Uh, I don't, you know, it's one of the most exciting plays in football is the onside kick. West Georgia has played well enough to win this game. They deserve to win this game. All they have to do is cover the onside kick. Well, two and the Saints and left. the Saints still have two timeouts. Just you need two. one first down. Not, I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I think mathematically, if we do the math right here, we're in good shape. Well. We're in good shape. Recover this, and, and they can only stop it twice. But they'll still have a little bit of time if I we don't have, pick up a first down. Let's see how it all plays out here, Cotton. <laughs> let's just recover the onside kick. Let's get the onside <laughs> kick, and then we can start mathing. <laughs> math is hard. Yeah, math is difficult. 
So Terrell Cole, Steven Peterson, Jake Davis, LaPerion Perry. Uh, who else is on the good hands team for us? Back deep is Wesley Kennedy. Not going to kick it to him. Trey Loveless on the good hands team. There you go. Jalen Tarver on the hands team. Former Harrelson County wrestler. Jerry Mays on the hands team. Zay Britt, T. Cole. Deneen will tee it up. Watch for the short kick, the little yep. dribbler. Right up the middle here. 132 to go. Wolves with a 21-19 advantage over the Saints. Must recover this. Watch that for onsides. Offsides, I mean. Wow. They just kicked deep to Wesley Kennedy at the five. Wesley Kennedy at the five. Made a man miss at the 15, and with a minute 25 left. I'm going to <laughs> not second guess, but first guess. I disagree with the call here uh, from Limestone, but I'm very thankful that they decided to kick the ball deep right here. They can only stop the clock twice. Yes, West Georgia will run it the first two plays, burn both of those timeouts. Depending on how long those runs take and how many yards are gained right there will determine what happens on third down. But you got to remember, a lot of play clock Unless right they have three timeouts in the scoreboard, wrong. Yes. No. <laughs> well, I, I believe they only have the two. Yeah. I believe they only had the two. They had to take a timeout, I think, early in the third. Well, Wesley Kennedy going to get the rock. We know that. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. First and ten, West Georgia. Hand to Kennedy, left side. Kennedy across the fifth, or across the 17-yard uh, line. So they're going to let it run on first down, it looks like, and they're going to play uh, play the odds to get a stop on second and then third down. 29, 28, 27 seconds. Interesting. I figured you always take the timeouts early. Immediately. Uh, so you know how much time you have left. That's the way I've always kind of understood and always done it myself. So uh, but they're letting it run on first down. Uh, we're inside, we'll be inside of 50 seconds. There's still 10 seconds left on the play clock. We'll be at 40 seconds when this ball snapped. Two receivers right, one to the left. Four seconds on the play clock. Three seconds. Two, one, snap. Hand to Kennedy. Left side, 20, 25, up to the 20, maybe the 26. Gonna have to be, a, or gonna be a yard short. A couple extra seconds off the clock. Gotta love that. 30 seconds left as it stands. It's gonna be third and one. Third down and one. So you know what's gonna happen right here. It's gonna be a run. Uh, if they do get the stop, they can take the timeout. There'll be 20 some odd seconds left in the football game to bring up the fourth down. So timeout, let's see what they reset the game clock to. And I, I'll be honest with you right here, too. You have all three timeouts if you're West Georgia, or at least two. I don't know if we've corrected with the yep. coaches challenge, but I'll be honest with you. Hard count right here. No play, nobody move. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules. First for the Wolves, that we head to Texas next week. I'm getting on a plane in Birmingham next week and flying out. We're going to be flying out to Texas A&M Kingsville, about 45 minutes south of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi southeast. Texas. Yeah. And then we'll that. play Mississippi College, West Florida. We have a bye week, and then we're not back in this booth, Coach, until October the 7th. Holy moly. So wow. it'll be completely different temperatures. Yes, it will. It'll <laughs> actually be football weather when we get back. Exactly. Coach, you've done a great job tonight. I appreciate you filling in. I appreciate you and, carrying me. Uh, you've done, I haven't carried you anywhere. You've held your own. Biggest play of the ball game right here, the play of the ball game. We try to get them to jump. Third and one. We might call a timeout. Yeah. Let it run all the way down and call your timeout. No reason to rush things. Six seconds on the play clock. Five, four, we're going to snap it. Hand to Kennedy. He breaks it. 35, 40, 45, 50, and Kennedy got hit. The old turf monster got him. Oh, oh I man. hope he's okay. No. Kennedy's hurt. I'm hoping this is more oh. of a pride injury. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Oh. I think we're going to be okay. He's jogging off a little bit right there. Oh. And I know it's tough for him. He does go down on the sideline. I hope he is all right. Um, but that is actually, you know, you wanted, you didn't really want to score. You, you want to end the game right now. And West Georgia is going to be, have the ability to do that. But hopefully with the health of this young man intact. Wesley Kennedy 
had a touchdown but just tripped up. The old turf monster got him. He's walking to this bench. He's going to be okay. Whew. Good, good. It's exactly what you wanted to have happen because now you get to get in the victory formation, Matt. Greatest Spanner. formation in football. And you go 1-0. and Doesn't matter how you do it, but you did it. You went 1-0 nope. and yep. this week. 21-19. to Final score. Wolves get the big victory. Hats uh, off to everybody involved. Complete and total team effort. The defense, what a wonderful job they did all night long. The offense made plays when they needed to. Coaching staff putting everybody in position to win, and they did just that. And, again, that's another home opener that the Wolves have won in a row. That's correct. I don't know what number we're that's on now, but 11 it's in a row, I think, in a since row. 2012. Yeah. If you play West Georgia, you don't want to do it week one. <laughs> Well, I got to give credit to Limestone, man. They came in here and played a really good ball game. And we got Coach Dean hopefully soon. I'm looking for – here, I see him. Yeah, tremendous effort tonight. What a first opening night of college football here for us at West Georgia. Yeah. And, Kate, if you can, try to point him to one of the cameras if you can. Still looking for him, and it looks like uh, Coach Dean, very classy, going over and asking about one of the limestone players is what it looks like. So, And there is Cade and Coach Dean. Let's send it down to Cade Perry. Coach, I know it was just how you drew it up, right? Tightrope walk. Yeah, absolutely not. This is a good football team. And proud of our guys the way they persevered through this. You know, when, when we made plays, when we had to, our defense stood up on the goal line twice. We had the big run there at the end. You know, it, that was, it was big for us. All right, go Wolves. Go Wolves, thank you. Big win tonight. Thank you to Cade Perrion. Shout out to Coach Dean and a great night to be a West Georgia Wolf coach. Final stats real quick. Wesley Kennedy, 169 yards, but it was the 82-yard touchdown run that closed the door. Rajas Mosley with 74 yards and two touchdowns. T. Cole ended up being our leading receiver. Three catches, 62 yards. And then on the defensive side of the football, uh, it was a great night as well for the Wolves. My live stats are frozen, so I won't be able to go through it. Well, I can tell, uh, you, tell you what, you those, there, there are two guys that stick out. Well, three guys, yeah. really. Merriweather sticks out on right. that end. Uh, the outside linebacker with a couple of sacks. Keandre early, Williams. 45, yeah. Keandre Williams and six. Amos uh, Don, who had a was in on almost every one of the goal line stops. To me, those are my plays and stops of the game right there. I want to give a shout-out to our great uh, crew tonight, our producer, Carrington Bothwell, Alicia Lee, our technical director, uh, Shemaya Pittman on replay, as well as Kamer Hatton. I hope I said that right, please. Uh, Mikael Blackwell on graphics and stats and uh, kind of ran the show on the back end of things. Uh, and then all of our camera operators, Jayla Cochran, uh, Joy Party, Jordan AG, uh, AJ, sorry, Jada Little, Carter Johnson, Oliver Pleese, Mark Fleming, our audio operator. Uh, let's see, Ashley, our studio audio operator. Uh, Sal LaRocca and Lauren O'Brien, our content creators. And then, of course, Matt Cash and Corey Spates. Great work by everybody back in the studio. So appreciate you all for everything that you do. Coach White, final thoughts, and we'll get out of here. I mean, honestly, first of all, for me personally, what a wonderful experience tonight to be here at West Georgia, to be at University Stadium, to see football again, uh, to be a part of such a tremendous crew. I am certainly thankful for that. But parting thoughts, West Georgia has a very good, well-disciplined football team. I look forward to seeing what they are going to do in the future and look, look, look forward to you calling that. So well, I appreciate you having me here tonight. We'll look forward to getting on the plane next week heading out to Texas A&M Kingsville and Carly Pear and Kate Perry and great work tonight on the sidelines for coach Nick White it's always a pleasure I'm Matt Skinner final score from University Stadium Wolves get the win 21-19 over the Limestone Saints we appreciate you all our next broadcast will be on October the 7th yes October 7th against West Alabama until then I'm Matt Skinner saying so long from Carrollton <laughs>